time consumptions okay but still the main key parameter which was missing earlier was data itself right now because of better internet connectivity because of cheap iot devices cheap sensors and you know worldwide deployment of this uh, sensors and all uh, collecting devices data collecting devices we have so much huge data that it's completely you know we do not know what to do about that particular data that much huge data we have any guess how much data has been generated on a daily basis as per the survey which was done back in 2021 the data generated on a daily basis is 2.5 exabyte that is you put 25 after 25 you put 17 zeros that much huge amount of data has been generated it you can say that 25 or 2.5 quintillion bytes of data was generated on a daily basis in 2021 now the expected forecast is it will be 463 zettabytes of data that will be generated on daily basis by the year 2025 so the amount of data is so huge na you you tell me everybody is having your mobile correct in mobile is there any data generated every millisecond a mobile you know it's generating data what is its gps location what is the speed of that particular mobile when you put on the google maps na and you are, when you are driving the same time it will show you the speed also there are certain applications in the mobile phones and all if there is you know sudden impact if a person falls down the mobile can generate an alert of accident like okay some very abrupt thing has happened so these all things how does that happen every millisecond the mobile sensors collect the data about the what do you say uh, accelerometer data okay where uh, you know there is the impact or if the mobile is moving in x y z directions in each direction how much force has been applied so all these calculations happens then currently people they have become so much involved in do social media and all how many tweets do you think happens on a daily basis it's 500 million tweets are posted on twitter itself on a daily basis it is expected everybody is having facebook account is there anybody who is not having uh, then uh, instagram twitter these are all our social media it is expected that you know even a 6 year child will have his digital footprint so once you have you know that kind of information about you know your social behavior companies can collect that data and based upon that data which is collected they can process it and they can you know put that data to use for their own business gains so these all things can be done now where does this artificial intelligence machine learning comes into picture what exactly do you mean by artificial intelligence ability of a particular system okay ability of a particular computer to you know mimic human decision making behavior that is basically artificial intelligence and how does that particular does it it basically learns you know what is the important characteristics of a human being emotions yeah even animals have emotions what what makes that particular thing apart thinking even animals can think there is a danger they will think they will run the most prominent characteristics of a human being which you know that characteristic starts when we you know birth and it is up till you know our death that particular thing is learning human are continuously involved in learning and you know that learning behavior if a particular system we give that particular learning thing only to a system it can learn from the records it can learn from the data it can learn from its own behavior it can learn from its input even it can learn from its output so based upon all this learning system is capable of making business decisions okay in simple terms like say let's say i have a you know investment profile okay 
if i'm investing 400 rupees i'm getting a profit of 20 rupees if i'm investing 800 rupees i'm getting a profit of 40 rupees if i'm getting if i'm investing 1200 rupees how much is the profit 60 rupees we can gain that knowledge how we gain because of past record how the growth was there we learned from that and then we predicted that okay if i'm going to invest 2000 rupees i'm going to get 100 or 200 rupees as a profit so this learning behavior if we give it to a computer that particular concept is called as machine learning so computer has learned how the uh, what you say how the growth is going to happen and based upon that learning now tomorrow i say like okay i'm planning to invest 10000 crores it will give me the expected profit then depending upon that okay these five companies are there if i invest 10000 crores in these five companies separately which company i should invest the one company which is going to give me more profit and how do i learn that from the business intelligence what i have gained so this all things you know from machine learning artificial intelligence we can apply now as a business uh, or a, you know e-commerce student what are the fields that you can you know understand where we can use this machine learning artificial intelligence can we apply this machine learning or artificial intelligence for marketing purpose i'll give you one understanding okay one case study i'll give you a scenario consider i am a manufacturer of a very high end mercedes car okay very high end sedan class cars okay and i have to launch my car so what is the first thing i'll do i'll create a you know good kind of a show or a one a stage where i'll call the people and there i will enclose that particular car that this is the new launch of my vehicle now as this hall we have how much is the capacity of this hall 300 people so i have a venue where, which can only manage 300 people so whom should i call for that event should i call uh, any persons who are having salary you know 20000 30000 the the price cap which i have kept for my car is 40 lakhs should i call people who are having salary 20000 or 30000 no if i call them they will come they will eat food my and they will go they are not going to purchase should i call a people you know to you know very high end that they are having salary you know 30 lakhs or 40 lakhs a monthly basis so those are my target people i can identify them people okay now consider the same scenario where i am launching a normal car okay the car price is 20 lakh oh, sorry 2 lakhs or 3 lakhs rupees is the launch of the is the price of my car do i need to call those 20 lakh or 30 lakh uh, people no they are not going to purchase even the 20000 30000 they are not going to purchase i need to identify the group of people who are going to invest who are going to purchase so that will be a useful optimization of my resources where i'm booking the venue for 300 people where i'm ordering the food where i'm giving some complimentary things so that venue that particular event should be optimized and to optimize that particular i need artificial intelligence to give me the predictions that these are the people based upon their economic status based upon their family status based upon their credit score based upon their salary uh, thing they are going to purchase a new vehicle even the people you know they look for the brand there are some people they will go only with toyota they will not buy any other car so for a launch of mercedes vehicle should i call the people who are loyal to toyota these all factors should be taken into consideration and we can easily do this by a analytics part okay so this is for our marketing what about hr human resource what what is the uh, thing of human resource hr manager if you you know you got employed into a particular firm and you are the hr manager and you have asked to fill up one job profile so what what you will do you will go to nokri.com you will type your whatever the job requirements are there and based upon that nokri.com will give you 10000 resumes we need to hire only one person will a single hr go through 10000 resumes how much time it will take the company will grow it will come in loss the company will close still the hr will be going with that 10000 resumes correct there are algorithms view feed what requirements are there 
you feed, you need to shortlist 10, 15 uh, resumes. You give all 10,000 resumes to that particular AI application. The application will sort based upon the locality, based upon your specifications, based upon your salary requirement. The application will itself sort the 10, 15 uh, resumes which are the best suitable for your job profile. LinkedIn and all, they do the, that kind of a thing. They already have deployed. There are, you know, smart resumes builder. They will build your resume as per the job requirement. Why? Because they know when you when your resume goes, there is already an AI machine which is going to sort your resume. So they make sure that the resume is already built into the same format. Okay. So you have 10, 15 resumes. You go through those resumes. Okay. Then you select three or four people for interview and that way the process will go on. How much day it will take maximum in one week time frame. So 10, 15 months to go through 10,000 resumes or five days to, you know, do it in one week. So that way it has been deployed in HR. Finance. Very, very important thing. And almost right now, you know, when AI came into the market, the retention for the AI was 95% into the banking sector. All banking sector, the moment they got this AI applications, they accepted that. And what was that application? Risk management. Okay, what does that application do? You request for a loan. The loan will, that particular application will go to that, uh, you know, that program. The program will see what are the risks involved to giving the loan to this particular person. What is the credit score of that particular person? Whether the person is having any other uh, debits or any other credits, so those all things will be taken care into consideration and whether to give a particular person loan, yes or no, will be decided by the bank. That way, you know, your loan is accepted or rejected. You know, you see that, right? Once you apply a particular loan, either it will get accepted or either it will get rejected and there are more chances of getting it rejected. Why the rejection happens? Because of all these factors, okay? So there also we only use AI. Second thing, where is artificial intelligence used? Have anybody made any call to a customer care for bank? Everybody in some or other times they have made. Who is the one picking up your call? The call will first go to the, there is some chatbot is there. They will tell you, okay, what do you want? You press one, you press two, you press three. So this is what thing happens in India. When I was in Dubai, no, I used to, you know, um, have uh, my account in Emirates NBD Bank. Okay. That's a very famous bank in Dubai. When I used to call that, rather than pressing one, two, three, I literally have to speak with that particular machine, what exactly I need. And according to that, the machine will give me the information. If I just call and if I say that, okay, I need to know my, you know, bank information, what are my uh, current statement for credit card and all the machine used to give me I do not need to go into that access to that particular point everything happens in a uh, what you say spoken terms only one of the very you know biggest example is there if you have uh, you know you can go and you can watch on YouTube Google assistant how many of you heard what is that Google assistant there is a there is a small uh, speech from Sundar Pichai and that video is around like two three minutes of time frame where he has actually shown how that Google Assistant work. You make a call and you inform the Google Assistant like okay I need to make a you know, appointment for a salon and all. Google Assistant that particular application will itself give a call to the local salon and it will book the appointment with a uh, what you say verbal communication. No, you know, the person who was taking that appointment, he did not even realize that, you know, he's speaking to a particular machine. He understood that he's speaking to a particular machine, uh, means like human being only. So that way we have advanced into this applications of, when you know, uh, artificial intelligence. So next, uh, like, uh, if you go for, you know, legal matters, anybody have understood or little bit knowledge how the legal system works, courts and all. Our AI application, they have currently made a breakthrough that, uh, you know, they have documented all the books to that particular application. And once you have that particular new case, okay, 
you put up the details for the new case that okay this case is for this patent infringement or you know uh, patent recognitions and all those things the application itself gives you the list of cases or reviews of cases which had the similar thing so currently the situation is that ai is been deployed at each and every places not just for you know our e-commerce but also in medical medical you see what happens there is a uh, option in ai uh, basically we call it as a computer vision okay we can connect a camera like a human vision right human can see certain things and based upon certain things he can take the decisions so same thing has been applied in uh, artificial intelligence also and that we basically say as computer vision we deploy computer visions to go through the x-rays you know what happens is if a particular doctor is there okay he is reviewing the x-rays for you know cancerous cells he will review 1000 x-rays within 1000 x-rays you know when you are continuously reviewing the same things there are chances that human can make a mistake right where there is a very small cancerous cell but as you know that 10,000 20,000 things you have reviewed you miss that particular part what happens with AI as it is a machine it has directed to do certain things doesn't matter you it you know repeats that things for 10,000 times or 10 lakh times the consistency is going to be same so right now we have AI applications which can go through those kind of uh, you know x-rays medical records and they can identify more accurately than a doctor could identify so even if you know you do not have the domain knowledge but still with application which is built with domain knowledge as well as the artificial intelligence can uh, stand as a cutting edge point when this AI came now there was huge commemoration that you know AI is going to replace human beings how many of you think that tomorrow whatever your jobs are there those are going to be replaced by AI there are few hands but it is not AI who is going to replace your job your jobs will be replaced by the person who knows about the domain knowledge what you are there and who has the AI knowledge how that AI can be deployed into your domain so that person is going to replace your job so it is better that you know you start building up your career whatever domain you have make sure you have understanding of this AI you know uh, recently I think so a month back US tested a drone and the drone was operated with AI you have heard about the drone strikes and how the drones are being operated the military drones not the drones what you fly in the beach so even we have that AI application used to that level you might understand how much accuracy is re required for that how much coding is required how much you know training has been required for that particular thing so all these things should be taken into consideration now tomorrow if you want to you know create a new uh, pilot human pilot who is well aware of running a drone it will take you know 10 15 months of training right now you can just copy paste that algorithm into a different drone within five minutes you have that particular thing it speeds up our you know aim and it provides it with the accuracy that we normally you know think that uh, what you say machines do with this we can you know take our businesses to scale even you know there are certain things that you know human being cannot do but that particular machine is able to do can anybody tell me how this particular AI ML started from any idea any story Achha, there is a movie called imitation game how many of you have watched that particular movie imitation games I would recommend if you know you, you want to start your career into this uh, business analytics or artificial intelligence you go and you watch that particular movie the movie is based upon the true events and we call that particular person as a father of machine learning Alan. Alan Turing okay and you know what was the scenario there was a particular encryption machine like a coding machine you your friends are you know if you want to send a particular message to your friends you will send some code 
only your friend who is going to know about that particular code the teacher who is teaching he will not recognize that so this kind of a things are there so this particular enigma was there and it will code a particular message and the message will be coded with a particular key okay and once you receive the message you need to know that key to open the message a simple scenario is there okay in that particular machine enigma you know how many keys were there it was 115 million million keys after 150 you put 18 zeros that many keys were there into that machine if a normal human being you know starts to decode that particular message he will use one key he will see if the message is decoded or not it will take around approximately a million years for that one human being to decode the message how much one million years a human can do that but the artificial intelligence the machine learning algorithm which we used which we deployed was able to crack down within half a day that is the way that you know this machine learnings artificial intelligence are gaining the current market today okay so it will be better that if you know all these things all right so any questions you have guys any questions related how you can go through what are the subjects what are the topics anything nothing see after this kind of a session now you guys should have tons of uh, questions how should we start what are the topics what are the things you should consider what are the you know market job opportunities Achha, I'll, I'll give you one more example how things are going to stand in current market how many of you have given the presentation what is the tool that you use for presentations? Canva is to create certain image and all. Chat GPT is to get the answers and all. That is okay that you used. But when real time, when you are presenting it, that time will you use Chat GPT or that time will you use Canva? PowerPoint? Okay. I'll give you one scenario. I need to understand, you know, what are the salary status for the people of Trichy. Clear? That's my goal. So based upon different BCom, uh, BSc, MBA, I have got the data. What I will do? I'll create a bar graph. Simple. I'll present it. Manager comes and he asks me, okay, fine, fine with the Trichy people, but I need a comparison with Chennai people also. See who is getting more salary and all. What you will do? You will go back, you will spend one day, you will uh, get the data, you will again create a comparative graph, you will present it. Again next day he will come, okay that's fine, but you know I need a consolidated information that how much is the you know salary thing for the Tamil Nadu people. Again you will go back, do all the things, come back sir, please now don't ask anything again. This was the traditional way of presentations, correct? How many of you have heard about Microsoft Power BI? The Power BI is a presentation tool. You make your reports, you go, you present it. If your director or if your manager is asking now that, okay, do this. With a single click of button, you can change your graph dynamically. Same time, it will shift all your data from Chennai to Trichy or even from Trichy and Chennai consolidated to a complete Tamil Nadu. So rather than going back and forth, understanding of this business intelligence perspective, easily you can manage. Microsoft Power BI is there one way, Tableau is there another way. How many of you have used Excel? Everyone. If I say uh, what is the formula? You know, if in a particular column, if a salary is about 30,000, he should be put up into, you know, a particular another category where he is capable of purchasing a car. So much big statement. How you will put up the formula? Very difficult, right? In Excel, there is an add-in which can calculate the formula. That add-in works on AI. You type whatever you want. 
in this particular cell these are the salary requirements if the salary cap is greater than this put the value copy that value into so and so cell range you write it that add in will give you the exact formula copy that formula put it in the cell your work is done even if you are work with excel there are a lot of tools in excel which can use for analysis have you ever seen a data analyzer there is a option in excel we have to include those things with those i think so sir knows better that what are the statistical things we can do we can calculate we can do the hypothesis testing we can do regressions we can do f test t test anova all the high end hypothesis testing which mainly students use for research they are available in race they are available in excel but we only know excel to just save the data correct nobody has utilized it to the full extent so even if you say that you know the very simple tool is there but with just adding a little pinch of artificial intelligence what it can do is miracles so it is up to you that whatever tools you know you have to push them how many of you have used any ai tool there are many very less people so ai you have used right anybody else what what is the ai tool you have used chat gpt chat gpt is everywhere chat gpt that's uh, you know all time favorite for students to doing the assignments that's it so apart from that gemini ai sir gemini 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 apart from that bard bard b a r d okay so let's not go to that high end how many of you have played pubg i am going to that point in pubg you know that uh, there is a bot whom you are playing opponent that bot is a ai why you have to go there all the major games candy crush and all everything they are you know the next thing the next sequence which is generated that is basically ai ai is generating that particular thing he knows how you are going to play he learns from your play and as you play more and more and more with that it starts to beat you actually you know our ai application also started from there only there was one game chess everybody knows chess one guy he created a digital version of that and it was so simple na that each and every you know third standard student can also beat that particular program but as the people kept on playing kept on playing after you know 500 600 times when that game had lost then he realized how the human player is going to play he had learned from your opponents and based upon that he started winning the game now that particular game is unbeatable so you know it from so simple to so complex ai can go it is up to us that on which level we consider and which level we accept that particular thing how many of you have planned for mba i think everybody should raise your hands currently you know ug pg is more required in your field so anyway if you are planning for mba if you are planning for you know any research and all all you need to do this you need to have your ai you do your research after you do your research you have to statistically prove that your research is good your research is accurate and for that you need to use ai tools you need to use r programming you need to use spss to validate your research validation of research means what we have to you know for example i am saying that the average salary in trichy is 50000 per month is it the average salary in trichy no some people will having 80000 some people will have 20000 so it completely varies but how valid is your argument you need to analyze that data you need to analyze the statistics how much time it will take to you know do it manually you have 20000 records you will it will take months to analyze that result statistically but with the spss software with excel software 5 minutes top max from starting with your project to ending with your results 5 minutes is the max so better to learn all these things better to you know gain a good scope of knowledge 
because this is the future guys you name anything defense ai is there even in arts and literature ai is there do you know about any uh, literature concept where ai was used how many of you have seen the movie harry potter everyone how many books are there earlier means like uh, two years back it was just seven books were there these seven books were given as an input to an application the application created a eight book which was in the same style of writing as jk rowling and that was a completely you know kind of a continuation of the harry potter sequence which if you read it you will feel it that this is the same continuity but that was created by a artificial human you know about uh, this canvas you type what you want as an image it will automatically create that is the arts so you name any field currently engineering science medical marketing legally everywhere we are you know surrounded by this ai applications understanding this ai how it works is a great benefit for you guys okay so i hope this particular session was very mind opening all right thank you thank you sir for sharing your knowledge and insight Next, I invite Dr. R. Vijayalakshmi, Assistant Professor in Commerce, to honor and introduce the speaker for the keynote address too. Good morning to one and all gathered here. I am truly honored to introduce a online speaker, a luminary whose expertise bridges the realms of physics and artificial intelligence, exhibiting the interdisciplinary nature of our ever-evolving technological landscape. Dr. T. Joseph Sahai Anand, an esteemed academician and researcher with a wealth of experience in the fields of material science, Manufacturing Engineering and Technology. Dr. Anand currently holds a position of Chief Technical Officer, DIBTA, Manufacturing Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Dr. Anand's academic journey includes obtaining a PhD in Material Science from the University of Hong Kong. His education background also includes an MPhil in Physics from Bardasan University, India. With a career spanning over two decades, Dr. Anand has made significant contribution to both academia and research. He has held various positions, including professor at the Faculty of Manufacturing Engineering, 
Technical University of Malaysia, Malacca, and Associate Professor at AIM, AIMST Research, Tokyo University, Japan, and Research Associate position at the University of Hong Kong have enriched his global perspective and collaborative research initiatives. His commitment to advancing knowledge is evident in his ex extensive publication record with numerous books monographs, modules, and over 150 research papers published in international and national and journals. Dr. Anand has received numerous awards and recognitions for his research contribution, including professional technologist accreditation from the Malaysian Board of Technologists, Lean Six Sigma Green and Black Belt certification, and membership in various professional organizations. In addition to his achievement, Dr. Anand has demonstrated leadership in aggregation exercises, curriculum development, and organizing international scientific conferences. His proficiency in Lean Six Sigma and materials-based manufacturing solutions makes him a soft after trainer and consultant in the industry. Dr. T. Joseph Sahai Anand's dedication to advancing knowledge coupled with his extensive teaching and research experiences make him a valuable resources in the academic and industrial landscape. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. T. Joseph Sahai Anand. We are fortunate to have him with us today. We are welcoming you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me, please? Can you hear me? Hello? Is my voice is audible? Yes, sir. It's audible. Okay. Thank you. So, Sabayor Anaivarukum, Inia Kalai Vanakam. Thanks to Dr. Vijay for her nice introduction about me. It's always uh, being good and blessed to be uh, virtually or physically in Trichy, which is my hometown. Okay. So, today I'm going to talk about a little bit about AI in manufacturing industry. I'm not going to give you a detailed presentation today because if you are looking at in the other fields and comparing to manufacturing, it cannot be immediately make a changes because when it goes to manufacturing industry whereby there will be producing millions of products or maybe, you know, more number of uh, cycles coming out, etc. So it's already started, but not like well-versed with comparing to other fields such as banking or medical or in other uh, like uh, fields. In saying that, today I will be introducing you what are the uh, introductory part in the manufacturing industry, especially on the automobile and electronic industry to whom I am also related a little bit. So though I was an academician for the past about 24 years, uh, now, recently, I joined as a freelance trainer and then also working for the companies, especially on the manufacturing sectors like uh, Infineon Semiconductors, which is a German base, and few other like a Samsung, LG, etc. Okay, so in the presentation, I start with a very basic one. So normally, we are talking about artificial intelligence means how a human... Okay, I can just start with a small example. Huh? If you all remember the movie uh, Enderen 2.0, right? And then in one scene, uh, the mother of the hero, Rajnigan's mother, she used to say that, uh, Chitti, can you switch on the TV? But she says in Tamil, on the TV, so that means what the robot used to do, just plug the TV and then put it on the floor. I think we all may have seen this, right? So this is what about the machines normally used to do. Because... The machine doesn't understand the reality behind it. It just follows the command and then it executes. So in this case, either you can call it as a robotics or mechatronics, the machines are already there because especially in the manufacturing sector, we call it as IR 4.0. That means industrial revolution 4.0 which is the more common one than I can say AI. Because we want to see that in case of any critical situation, whether the huge manufacturing sector, because most of the time, if you see what is manufacturing, 
it's not just depends on one particular lab or maybe few labs. If you're taking automotive industry, a car can be made, which needs about at least 45 to 60 different locations. And some can be automated, some can be manual. In this situation, if we directly include AI, then it's not full of automation of AI. It's linked between manual automation and AI. So this is what we need to understand, whether can machine things. Things means the comment, not just only the comment it follows or execute, rather than that, when there is a real situation, can it be possible or not? The second one, also we can ask a question like, can machines be truly autonomous? Is it okay to leave the machine all the time? Just take an example of aviation industry. Huh? So even though we know that when there is a long haul flight, the pilots use to control the flight only when there is a critical needs, meaning he will be doing the takeoff and then landing part. And when there is any turbulence kind of things, he used to operate the plane. Rest of the time, the pilot used to leave it in the autopilot mode. Just imagine in an airplane, we don't include any physical pilot. Okay, so it's all completely like what we are talking about, Tesla, etc. Is it possible? So then the situation need to be there that can machines be truly autonomous? Is it possible? Or can machines program themselves or can machines learn not what we are programming, what we are coding? Is it by the nature of conscious and is that necessary? So this is where the thing mainly goes on in the case of uh, artificial intelligence in terms of uh, manufacturing sector. Of course, because the perspective of the artificial intelligence in three different major one, I can say, in terms of a philosophical or maybe psychological or the engineering one. Okay, so what is the nature of intelligence in terms of philosophy? Or maybe in the psychological, okay, you can go for how do humans think in a different scenario. But when it comes to engineering, okay, it is useful in terms of advanced methods for building complex systems that solve hard real world problems, such as automation already there and including the IR 4.0, which is industrial revolution using IoT, cloud storage, etc. But when it comes to the model of intelligence, are the humans a good model of intelligence? For example, if you're talking about strength, interpretation, dealing, judgment, all are our strength. But in case of we are comparing uh, why we talk about uh, weaknesses, humans are relatively slow compared to the machine. And of course, human nature is there may be error. So due to lack of interest or maybe personal problems or even you may be tired or maybe just now your boss called you. So then, you know, the human error may be very normal. Okay. And then, of course, sometimes limited memory, subject to biases, influenced by emotions, all those things. But these are all some of the movies which already maybe you have seen or maybe introduced the AI part. Okay, so it's already there. Of course, it's not very young. I mean, it's already about 50 years, though we are talking about only maybe last 10 years or so, but it's about 50 years already. And it used in major industries. Okay, I, we know that. But let me talk about some of the uh, leading manufacturing sector, how they are using it in a very simpler manner. Then I will come back to one actual case study that what we are doing, then I will summarize because the time given to me is about 30 minutes. So I'll try to finish it within the time given. Thank you. So let's start one video, which is talking about how the AI is utilizing in the manufacturing sector. Is the sound can be heard from the video? Someone can please confirm. I now pause it now. Is it the sound? Artificial intelligence in... Is it the sound coming out, please? Yes, sir. It is audible. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Artificial intelligence and the manufacturing are a perfect fit because in manufacturing, we tend to produce many, many identical parts and products which generate huge amounts of data, which in turn can then be fed into the artificial intelligence algorithms 
and thereby help them to learn, improve, identify problems and process optimizations. Currently, there are many, many projects, experiments going on in the manufacturing sector. And of course, one of the areas where you see this a lot is the automotive sector. We talk about matrix production systems, where basically we do not have any more the typical century-old linear production system, production line. Instead, we have basically the products, the cars in this case, being put onto a pod, and the pod moves through the factory in a way that is optimized for this specific product. Especially when you go to products or cars in the, in the high segment where each car is completely different from the next car. And therefore a linear production sequence doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is not future science fiction, this is happening today already. A perfect example of the use of artificial intelligence in manufacturing are robotics. Right now, you need about two weeks of highly paid engineers to optimize the robots so that they can really do what they need to do. In the future, we'll have robots that do this by themselves. They will see how, let's say, the welding points are done compared to what they should be doing and then learn and improve. There will be perhaps one engineer to overlook all of this, but the robots will learn by themselves using artificial intelligence. Okay, so this is one from the automotive industry. So we move on to the other one. Data science dominates most industries today as most are based on data. It has revolutionized various sectors considering the vast field of data science and its diverse application. It is only to be expected that it will find its place in manufacturing as well. The manufacturing industry is undergoing a tremendous transformation supported by today's digital age requiring greater agility for customers, business partners and suppliers. The increasing scale and speed can be challenging for manufacturers and this is where data science comes into play. Big data analytics are driving smart manufacturing. According to IDC prediction, by 2021, at least one-fifth of the largest manufacturers will rely on embedded intelligence system based on cognitive data applications and IoT. Creating a need for artificial intelligence and machine learning will result in the automation of large-scale processes, speeding up the execution time by nearly 25%. Let us see some of the applications of data science and manufacturing. Real-time data of performance and quality. The data collected from the machines are used to create a set of performance indicators. This enables data-driven root cause analysis of scrap and downtime. Data science provides a proactive and responsive approach to machine maintenance and optimization. This improves productivity and reduces downtime. The creation of a predictive model that monitors machine performance and downtime can then be used to predict the type of yield improvement, the impact of external changes, scrap reduction and quality. Preventive maintenance and fault prediction AI can analyze data from various sensors and equipments to predict when maintenance is needed. This can help identify problems before they occur and reduce the risk of unexpected downtime. Machine learning algorithms can be used to analyze data from equipment and identify patterns that indicate potential failures. This can help manufacturers schedule maintenance before a failure occurs. Computer vision systems can monitor the condition of equipment and identify any issues that may need to be addressed. Automation and robotization in the smart factory. AI algorithms can be used to analyze data and make decisions in real time, enabling the automation of tasks that previously required human intervention. AI can be used to predict when equipment is likely to fail, allowing maintenance to be scheduled in advance rather than waiting for a problem to occur. The last one is supply chain optimization. Artificial intelligence can be used in supply chain optimization to improve efficiency, reduce cost and increase customer satisfaction. It can be used to analyze data from various sources to forecast demand, identify trend, optimize production and also develop and execute optimal plans for sourcing, production and distribution. Taking constraints into account such as capacity, lead times and transportation cost. 
AI plays a vital role in optimizing inventory levels based on demand forecast and lead times, reducing excess inventory and associated costs. AI helps optimizing transportation routing and scheduling, taking factors such as distance, traffic and weather into account. A McKinsey survey found out that companies that are leveraging digital transformation in manufacturing are leading the industry. They have adopted four IR technologies such as Big Data Analytics, IoT, Predictive Analysis and Automation to name a few. As a result, they have seen a number of benefits in manufacturing efficiency, productivity and cost. These include 30-50% to less machine downtime, 15-30% to higher labor productivity, 10-20% to lower quality related costs. Early adopters have already begun to gain a competitive advantage by significantly reducing operation cost, improve time to market, and optimizing data. Okay, so if you happen to heard in the manufacturing industry, for example, Toyota production system from Japan, they come up with a technique called Lean Six Sigma. Maybe most of you have heard about it. But all the while, we used to talk about Lean Six Sigma. That is, Lean is waste management, reducing the waste. Six Sigma is the continuous improvement. So all the while we used to do it for human beings because in a large factory or like a manufacturing sector where there are 2,000, 3,000 employees or even sometimes 20,000 employees, then they used to accumulate some of the things and then identify how we can reduce the waste management and to the continuous improvement. Now the current scenario in the manufacturing industry, employees are already done the Lean Six Sigma. Now we are looking for the machines or the robots that we are using. If you remember earlier, I mentioned to a small joke, I mean, it's not a joke, it's an incident what we watch in the movie, right? So the robots are just following only executable comments or machine learning. And then now, by including the artificial intelligence into the machine. So now the machine waste management, or we can call it as a lean management of the machine. Also, the continuous improvement of the machine can be possible. So this is what now the new revolution we can say in the manufacturing industry with respect to the artificial intelligence. The demand for high quality and highly customized manufacturing is rising. Batch size one is the new manufacturing paradigm. In mass production, predictive maintenance was applied. However, for batch size one, it is not applicable mainly due to the large variation in the production environment. For instance, tools can be worn out which may impact the final product quality. Alien objects can damage the manufacturing tools and products. Or parts with low quality will be used for the final products. Such problems are often detected too late, so they may impact the final product quality and productivity. And this can eat the expected profit. Current problem monitoring solutions cost too much time and money. Siemens created an innovative technology to automate and simplify the process. Now, manufacturers train a neural network and deploy custom models. The technology recognizes abnormal situations without user intervention. The operator receives notifications within seconds, enabling immediate problem resolution. This significantly reduces non-conformance costs and expensive tool breakdowns. Products are released faster with highest quality and maximized profit margins. Okay. So finally, Hi, I'm Conrad Konarski. I'm the Senior Practice Head for Artificial Intelligence and Internet of Things for Vsoft Labs. So artificial intelligence in the manufacturing industry is being used across a variety of different application cases. 
it is being used as a way to enhance a defect detection through a sophisticated image processing algorithms that can then automatically categorize defects across really any industrial object that it sees. It's being used to analyze uh, sensor technologies, Internet, te Internet of Things technologies that are looking into the industrial manufacturing process to collect data to understand and how to improve the, those efficiencies in terms of the production output, in terms of how often things fail. Uh, artificial intelligence is also being used as a way to support uh, simply enhancing the individual operator experiences either through augmented reality technologies that are assisting in field workers being able to perform their, their duties or otherwise in just supporting various health and safety aspects of that field worker, supporting the, them to make sure that they're wearing the correct personal protective gear and also supporting them throughout their entire operational process, making sure that if they fall in, that the artificial intelligence can pick them up, making sure that their entire operation is safe. Thank you. So what we are looking at so far, in the case of uh, artificial intelligence in manufacturing, yes, it's already introduced, but we cannot apply to the entire system. For example, when we are talking about automation, huh? so when any manufacturing industry, they may classify into five categories, like a process, manufacturing process, and then designing, and then materials, and then management, and then automation. So usually the automation part, it's easy for us to move into artificial intelligence. But when it comes in terms of the abnormal situations, especially when there is a failure, okay. But this failure can able to give us some kind of information through the artificial intelligence, but introducing that into the market to come up with a new product, it's not that easy. Because when you're talking about manufacturing, it's a large scale. Sometimes it's millions of billions of products. Let's say you're talking about a vaccine. Even the vaccine used to be millions or maybe billions. So in that case, the artificial intelligence can give us an overview, but we need to be really tested. So in the case of a manufacturing, automotive industry already implemented it, whereas oil and gas, they are started doing it. But again, so we cannot use like a individual users like in other field like a banking, etc. Here it goes in a large scale. And what actually doing in the manufacturing industry? Now the lean six sigma or the lean management or the continuous improvement, they are applying to the machine language things, that is the robots and then automation things, so that it can able to give us a better information output. Okay, so this is a just a small overview about what's going on in the manufacturing sectors. So these are all some of the things we can say. Huh? So for example, if you're talking about intelligent reactions, now we are talking about uh, self-made cars and then auto cars, etc. So then there are information need to be copied and then did. But sometimes when the situation goes off, suddenly it's become totally dark. Okay, human being normally can think about it like, okay, when I'm going that particular way, okay, this is how I have to make a turn because it's rainy day, something like that. So artificial intelligence still not going into that depth. Rather, it's applicable for more sophisticated scenario. For example, we had to accept like countries like India, Malaysia, Sri Lanka. Here all it's like a developing stage whereby still it's of more manual things rather than the automation so this ai playing a major role in terms of the automation related things rather than human centered places okay so this is what i can say about a short summary i think on the time given for me is 30 minutes i hope i have given a small overview any related questions if anybody has maybe i can able to answer to that because i have uh, some more but i think due to time factor better i stop it here can just give you an overview of it. Okay, so, so this is one of the things that we are working with, but this is a huge one. If I have to explain, okay, I can just tell you in a very two minutes. We are working with the Infineon semiconductors. 
previously you know in, in the electronic sector or in the manufacturing sector we are using the number of parts to be too small for your information our mobile phone has about 8200 to 13500 parts so in this case what happened all of these parts need to be put down in our mobile phone which has about 15 cm in height and then 6 cm in wide so in any phone normally used to be 8500 components means the space is very much limited and also the error for example it may be due to heating element or it may be due to short circuit or it may be even due to minor like a nano soldering we call thermosonic wire bonding all of them are actually giving some problem so now when we introduce this to the artificial intelligence especially on the electronic industry now it can able to predict where it will be and you know how it will be at the nano scale level which we are trying to implement of course this we are working in the last two years and some of the results are huh, the only one thing with the manufacturing sector is we don't release the results here and there it's not like a publication i'm doing my work of phd two years and then six months my first publication second so normally manufacturing sector works in a different way do complete checking once it is successful they will introduce to the market once it is fail they change it so that's why sometimes in the manufacturing sector how the ai is completely implemented is not totally coming out of the coming out to the society but it is going on especially in the automotive industry it's fully utilizing whereas in the other form of industry like a manufacturing like a food industry or even we can say like a materials based like a polymer based plastic based industry still it is ongoing thank you very much any questions from the audience side dear participants if you have any questions please raise your feet we'll provide you with the mic okay thank you sir your session on artificial intelligence usage in manufacturing sector was very useful thank you so much for joining sir it's a pleasure thank you everyone hope you have a good time over there dear participants now it's time for tea break tea will be served outside the conference hall we'll be back
we are now moving to the panel discussion i now invite dr g nyanrat sir head department of commerce to welcome the panel members very respected chairperson and moderator for this session dr raja jabar singh other members of the panel and delegates members of the faculty student friends ladies and gentlemen welcome to this panel discussion on artificial intelligence its application and adoption in uh, business uh, we have listened to few lectures yesterday and today we thought we'll have a, a small discussion with people who are involved in this field of artificial intelligence so we put together few panelists few members who are known to us and who are little Uh, new to us and on behalf of all of you i'd like to extend a warm welcome to all the panelists and the moderator on stage especially especially i'd like to welcome uh, the moderator dr raja jabasingh is the vice principal for st joseph's college of commerce bangalore and uh, that's a uh, a double plus great college he was he is the iqac coordinator he was instrumental in getting it done so welcome sir thank you very much for joining us we have a great professor from indian institute of management trichy professor dr saravanan uh, he is a professor of finance uh, he is a very busy person but when we requested him he is always very kind enough to be with us uh, last year he was here this year also when we requested him he is very kind enough to be with us thank you very much sir and welcome to our program and we have uh, mr jayara who is a senior marketing manager for uh, business standard uh, we should specially welcome him and thank him because he is is a reason how why we had a good uh, start yesterday the two speakers yesterday the one who presided the one who gave the inaugural address and the first keynote address uh, dr balasubramanyam as well as dr mr batrinath both of them were brought in to our midst by uh, sri jayaram sir so he has been a close friend of our department we are very glad that he is with us he is into many things mcom students might know him but people who don't know him you can get in touch with him and uh, uh, he'll be helping you a lot so thank you jayaram sir for all your help and welcome to this uh, panel discussion we are very happy to have uh, pradeep kumar a world student and he is now a faculty at uh, chinmaya vishwavidyalaya at kochi he is also a very knowledgeable person he has completed uh, cpa australia he has finished many things his mcom mphil bl uh, degrees run to many pages uh, we are very glad that he is with us this morning thank you very much pradeep for joining us and we have a faculty uh, dr john robinson from the department of mathematics his current area of research is artificial intelligence so when we heard about it we requested him to join us and he has very uh, kindly joined us thank you robinson sir and welcome to this session we are again very proud to have uh, anna with us anna is a an old student of our department she did bcom ca Uh, in our department and then she went on to do uh, mca from our college and now she is with uh, cloud sense chennai so we requested her to be come and be part of this panel discussion so she has traveled all the way from chennai and is here with us hana thank you so much and welcome to this uh, panel discussion and we have shruti patel our own student from bcom third bcom ca Uh, we wanted a mixed group of people so we have professors students and people who are into uh, industry thank you shruti patel for joining and welcome to this program so once again i welcome all our panelists and moderator and also i extend to each one of you a very warm welcome thank you very much for joining i hope we'll have a very useful session now thank you very much thank you sir we invite gomati shankari and jerisha of mcom to introduce the panel members good morning everyone 
I am glad to welcome the panelists of this two days international conference on artificial intelligence, adoption and application in business. We are truly happy to welcome Dr. Raja Jabashing, Vice Principal of St. Joseph College of Commerce, Bangalore. He has done his PhD from Bharatiya University, Coimbatore and MCOM from St. Joseph College, Trichy. With over 19 years of teaching experience, he specializes in the area of HRM, organizational behavior, labor law, and principles of HRM. He serves as a reviewer of various journals of prestigious publication houses. He has been a resource person for various national and international conference and workshops. He is a recognized PhD guide for Bangalore University. Now it's time to honor him. I request Dr. Manigandan to honor Dr. Raja Jabba Singh. Next, we are truly honored to welcome Dr. P. Saravanan, Professor from Indian Institute of Management, Trichrapalli. He is also an adjunct professor of IAM Kolikot, Indoor, and Ranji. His areas of interest are corporate finance, security analysis and portfolio management, corporate governance, and project finance. Speaking of his publications, Sar has published three books in accounting and financial management, and he is a regular columnist in leading business newspaper like Economic Times and Hindu. He has also conducted around 100 corporate training programs. I request Dr. Lawrence to honor Dr. Saravanan, sir. We are here to welcome our next spokesperson, Shri Pratip Kumar, Assistant Professor of Chinmaya Vishya Vidyapit, Ernakulam. Sir has done his MCOM from Bharadasan University and MPhil from Bishop Eber College. Being an experienced person in law and economics, he teaches business law, corporate governance, and managerial economics. He is an expertise in negotiation, risk management, corporate law, and IPR. He is also passionate about traveling and positive psychology. We are truly happy to have you, sir. Now it's time to honor him. I invite Professor Anand to honor Dr. Pratip Kumar. It's time to welcome the next person, Shri Jaira, Deputy General Manager, Business Standard Chennai. Sir is expertise in the field of sales and marketing with experience in telecommunication, print media, digital industry. He is currently heading the circulation and digital sales of new market for the product and has achieved highest institutional sales. He believes and follows the four P's such as patience, perseverance, passion. He believes in the strategy that Team works make the dream work. Now it's time to honor you, sir. I invite Professor Palraj to honor Sri Jairaman.
We would like to introduce Dr. John Robinson, Assistant Professor, Department of Max, Bishop Weber College. His areas of specialization are fuzzy optimization, fuzzy data mining techniques, and fuzzy decision making. Sir has 14 years of experience in teaching field, and he has made his renowned publications in various reputed international journals, and has published three books. It's time to honor you, sir. I request Dr. Meharaj Banu to honor Dr. John Robinson, sir. We are very happy to invite our illustrious alumni, Hannah, who did a BCom CA and MCA badge 2017 to 2020. She started a career in Cognizant Technology Solution and served there for a period of six months. Currently, she is working as a product support engineer in Maxis. We would like to honor you, ma'am. I invite Dr. Telagavadi to honor Hannah Wings. At last, I'd like to invite a young role model, Ms. Shruti Patel of 3rd BCom CA. She is a wonderful leader and someone who's very strong in academics and communication. It's time to honor her. I request Dr. Margaret to honor Shruti Patel. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, now the floor is open for discussion. Respected Professor Nan Raj, head of the Department of Commerce and Department, fellow panelists, and my colleagues and my dear students. It's a great honor and privilege to stand before you to moderate this wonderful session. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the conveners to chart out this particular theme on artificial intelligence adoption and applications in business in current business scenario. Friends, you everywhere, everyone aware that artificial intelligence is one of the important component in everyone's life, not only in the business perspective, in everyone's life, in the changing dimension, in the changing landscape of our business, even as students, even as a business leaders, the, the role of artificial intelligence plays an important. You know, the CEO of, uh, of Google, Mr. Sundar Pichai, one of his World Economic Forum, he said, I quote, AI will impact everything including every product across every company, I unquote. That's the situation of the remarkable process involved in AI. As I said at the beginning, the AI transform every aspect of our lives. 
without clear roadmap, that's a, there are another bottleneck challenges in the AI. Without having a proper roadmap, AI also it results in a different uh, furious outcome. The challenge before the before the industry and as an academician, as a students, you have to approach the AI in a perspective way. Every minute there, there, there are a lot of innovative practices uh, as far as concerned in the AI, machine learning, deep learning is concerned. That's the reason why we are here to learn, to unlearn new things from our co-panelists. We have diverse panel members across the domain areas from academicians, we have from corporate people, we have young uh, consultant, uh, our own students here. They're going to share their experiences, specifically what has happened in the field of uh, AI. Uh, we, uh, we are going to listen to them. Uh, as far as concerned with the entire proceedings of this uh, panel discussion, we are inviting each person, each panelist, to give their observation and opinion about their respective domain area. Please listen to them for, for about eight to 10 minutes. Then I will, uh, will, will open, floor is open for a QA session. And finally, I will give you final remarks and the session, will, we will conclude the remarks. That's the proceedings of this, enter, uh, this panel discussion. Uh, thank you so much for the panel members. We look forward to listen from uh, your perspective domain areas. I will, is there any? We have panel members uh, right from senior, uh, junior to almost very junior members to very senior faculty members and very senior corporate leaders. Uh, I would like to start with uh, Professor uh, Jairam, Deputy Manager, uh, sorry, uh, Deputy Manager, not a Professor, Jairam, Deputy Manager, Marketing Department, Business Standard. We will look forward to hear from Prof Mr. Sri Jairam. We'll start with. Uh, corporate first. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, one of the most challenges of uh, a speaker is either if you are the first speaker or if you are the last speaker. So now the moderator has uh, thrown the ball in my court. Uh, at the outset, I thank the always young, uh, my well-wisher professor, Nyanaraj sir, for giving me this opportunity to be on stage and remain young, being in amidst of uh, various students. The learned minds and the to be future bright uh, superstars, the two young girls from who are the past uh, students and the present student of this college. I also thank uh, uh, Professor Dr. Shanti Merlin, madam, for the wonderful coordination. And uh, uh, Professor Nyanaraj uh, sir was telling me, uh, Jairam used to help us, but it's the other way around. See, uh, there are some things which you have to do, you have to push, uh, you have to follow it up. So that he has been meticulously doing so that he made me active. So which an AA cannot do. Uh, so that is the human uh, touch, the human uh, relationship the human bonding. Um, uh, my only request, humble request is, next year also this conference will continue. In the future years also it will continue. But we want him to be present uh, with us so that he continues to inspire me uh, uh, personally as a well wisher. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, AA has been a uh, disruptor. Um, it is across the globe across the areas, even in this place. But uh, I was under the impression, being a, a print media guy for the last uh, nearly 20 years of my career, AA will not disrupt or uh, get into uh, the arena of uh, media or journalism or print media. But no, the statistics, what uh, we have, is something amazing, but equally alarming also. Um, recently a survey did uh, that 90% of the newsroom, because you all know the uh, TV or the visual or the print media, it is mostly, uh, it's driven by the newsroom. What it's published in the newspaper, you read. What is published in a magazine, you read. 
what is published in a TV, it gets escalated across as a news. So that all 90% of the data what I got is 90% of the um, newsroom has already been using some form of AI and 80% in news distribution and 75% in news gathering. So what it makes is, it's a challenge for the people who are in the news gathering because people trust a news, then you uh, follow a newspaper or a magazine or a TV, whatever uh, visual media you have. But ca can uh, AA give you the empathy? Can AA give you the emotions? Can AA give you the real trust or uh, the life to a news gathering, it can never give. But again, uh, a challenge has been uh, thrown up. Recently in March, India Today introduced an AA bot called Sana. Sana is a AA news reader. So they tried this method and uh, which has been working. And in fact, uh, uh, Professor uh, Bala Balachandran who is a, one of the management gurus. So once I was talking to him in the Great Lake campus, he told me, um, so I hope you all can understand Tamil. Uh, okay. Jaram, if Chinese start communicating in English, they will be the real disruptor and they will rule the world. Chinese Without my parents' uh, approval, I joined the Indian Army. We have an inquisitive mind. If we have a young person, we have a young person. Sir, you are shooting, you are not shooting. He said, no, but he said, no, 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 but try it. But at least, he said, no, 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 satisfaction. So, he uh, said this maybe 10 years ago. So that is one challenge which has posed for the, uh, okay, across the globe, but thankfully, that English communication level has not improved. But in the AALA, news uh, bot, uh, they, they were the pioneers. They introduced a news bot, um, a news reader with the AA application. So they are well ahead. It doesn't mean whether they know well English, they can converse English, but they were getting into the all the technological. Uh, the technological universities, I think the learned professors will say, no, how uh, they are uh, well ahead of that. So uh, that is how the AA is into print media. And there is now it is also used positively in the ad selling. So how to uh, gauge the data from the uh, customer uh, perception, the customer views. For all these analytics, AA is helping us. So that is one uh, good thing which is happening in the media space. And uh, as I told you, uh, Xinhua was the Chinese agency which did that. And uh, the world's first news channel, which is working on artificial intelligence, is called News GPT. So now uh, you have a news channel also. But all said and done, I have a very strong belief. See, uh, you all, we all got some bouquets. So yesterday, Bala sir and uh, um, uh, Mr. Badri was asking, sir, remember Nalla are the bouquets? Who made this? Where you got this? So Madam said it is done by our students. So this an AA cannot do. That imagination, that uh, uh, power of... Uh, <laughs> so why it is called AA? Is a gas? Anyone has got a gas? See, the missile Murray and Pakatla and Deber Rumba learned Nadula or a senior professor, Anga or Yunga, Yungatan and Nare Katigla. I got them waiting. A cannot create, it can only copy ideas it has heard. That is why it is called as artificial intelligence. And let it continue that way. So let it be a useful thing for us, but not a real disruptor in either form and thankfully professor nyanaraj sir in the personal conversation he said maybe in the next program we can do one on a in education 
So uh, thank you, sir. You please do. As from business standard, we'll also help it. And uh, this is the learning uh, I got from AI, which we are using across the print media platform. So I look forward to learn more from the learned members and the young uh, superstars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Jairam, for your thoughts on how the print media involved in AI uh, in a different aspects with Chinese experience also. Good. I now request Prof Dr. Professor Saravanan to express his views and opinion on AI and implement aspects. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gigi, for inviting me. So I'm very glad among the, you know, the <coughs> young students and uh, the learned people like Professor Mr. Jarka, Jairaman. Uh, I totally agree with uh, what my uh, you know friend uh, Jairaman said that uh, uh, AI cannot replace human being as on today. As on today, AI cannot replace human being. But the days are being counted after a certain point of time, it will be almost equal to 90 to 95 percent equal to human being. 90 to 95 percentage. <coughs> Since I'm a man from finance, uh, I can say only five major pointers where AI disrupt, disrupted the whole life. Uh, I hope most of you are uh, commerce students and you all know well about stock market, uh, BSC, NSC, uh, DMAT account and many of you must be having a DMAT account and uh, many of you must be actively trading, many of you must be investing, right? I'm a very active trader, I repeat, I'm not an investor, I'm a very active trader since 1985. So I made millions of money, I also lost millions of money. Okay, then why are you doing trading, sir? But, uh, you know, it's, uh, life is not always full of bed of roses, right? Sometimes you can make money and sometimes... Uh, you lose money also. But we need to look at in an average how much money you are making. That's why I'm in the stock market. Anyway, so now I'm no more trader, I'm more of an investor. So now, many of you must be knowing a term called algo trading. Have you heard this term? Algorithmic, tra algorithmic trading. So what is that? Algo trading? So earlier days, if those who could remember and recall during 1980s, 1990s, whenever you wanted to buy a share, you ought to take a black color telephone with nine holes on that. You ought to dial and you go to call the broker and you go to get connected to the broker and tell the broker hey what is the market man currently okay you buy acc 100 shares bhcl buy 200 shares like that we we'll used to order <coughs> we used to call the broker over the phone place the order uh, to the broker uh, the order over the phone and order get executed then things slowly changed because the brokers also used to go and sit inside the you know the regional stock exchange terminus then because of the advent of internet and everything, brokers have their terminus uh, in their own office. So then after some point of time, credit goes to all the technology. Today, if you want to buy a stock, there is no need to call anybody. You just you pick up your mobile phone, go to the app of the broker, whatever the uh, app that you're using, zero the whatever it may be. From that, you can place an order. Now, AI made life much more better. So if I'm an institutional investor, there, uh, there is no need to uh, very carefully monitor my portfolio. So I program in such a manner, I tell the system that uh, if this particular stock price goes beyond a particular, particular percentage, buy automatically, algorithmic trading. So what happened, you train the system in such a manner by feeding all the past data. So that's what we call as the machine learning, right? It's a branch of artificial intelligence. So you train the machine in such a manner based upon feeding them the historical data, you feed it and instruct the machine or instruct the system. When such and such thing happen, no need of the human being intervention. Automatically you can buy, automatically you can sell. So that is what is the order of the day in today's uh, algo trading. It's very, very popular among the large institutional investors. Forget about the uh, small people like you and me. Large institutional investors, large mutual funds, uh, including LIT, uh, LIC, uh, UTI, uh, you know, pension funds. Many people in their portfolio management division, they are using the algo trading. So that is the straight use of uh, 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 AI into the, uh, into the finance space. That's one point. Second point, Again, within the banking and finance space, there is a, a term which most of you know called frauds. Right? There are different types of frauds, right? Uh, so people might steal my credit card data, right? Uh, when I hand over my credit card in the petrol pump, so he might steal the data. Uh, so many things are happening. Or I log into my banking account uh, and I forgot to log out in a common uh, you know, uh, computer. So these things are very common. So AI is also being extensively used for fraud detection. I don't know some of you, how many of you know in the latest Enforcement Directorate's uh, raid, which happened in Tamil Nadu, I don't want to name, in some of the key people's offices and uh, uh, houses, they used AI. 
for what to transact all your transaction so we think that if i create a shell company and through that i can transfer the funds to mauritius and from there i can transfer it back to india it is untraceable that is what we used to think now with the help of ai they can detect exactly where the origination of the transaction and what are all the different locations that money is got here it was not possible to detect here i mean it was uh, it was very difficult to detect so now with the help of ai it is very feasible and most of the enforcement directorate raids are being conducted by using ai you may be very surprised to know this how come sir government is using ai for uh, tracking the fraud detection yes they are using extensively i repeat they are using extensively the fraud detection especially transferring the funds illegally outside of the country and think that i am bringing back the funds in a, a legal manner so they may not get caught today get detected today but very shortly they will get detected so they, that's being used extensively in fraud detection at the third dimension where uh, ai used extensively is on credit scoring so when you and me walk into the bank and ask for a bank loan they will say <coughs> sir provide me your uh, pan card etc and they search what is your civil score because people like you and me the civil score is a deciding factor okay your civil score is uh, above 700 you are entitled for uh, uh, you know x amount of loan etc whatever they do now in order to detect the credit scoring no more depending upon the civil score only uh, mr jaraman must be knowing they go to my social media pages and observe what kind of postings that i am making in my linkedin facebook instagram all the show, uh, uh, twitter or x so they go and observe all the non financial information about me from that they can also make a scoring credit scoring so gone are days only by looking at my pan card by looking at my transactions uh, uh, you know whether any checks are being bounced based upon that they assign the credit that's all gone of course they play a very minor role so people go to the social media and obtain elicit whatever the requisite information based upon that they uh, they arrive at the credit score they arrive at the credit score so no more depending upon only civil score right so in credit scoring also very extensively used then the fourth thing many of us know there is a term called wealth management because we all are commerce uh, students you all know the term called wealth management so what is wealth management so i want i have some x amount of income and every month i can save some x amount as a surplus so i am scratching my head where do i park this money so the most sought after place for people like us to uh, invest our money is the bank fd why we all think about bank fd we all think that if we deposit our money in bank fd that is safe huh? it's a myth it is safe only up to the tune of 5 lakh rupees only okay so now we have the investment advisors or the wealth wealth manager wealth managers now wealth managers also getting replaced by these chatbots so these chatbots are coming and assessing profiling the individuals and assess the risk of that each person or the risk appetite of the each person they assess what is the risk appetite of the person and advise okay sir you park 20% of your income in bank fd 20% in equity 10% in uh, bonds like that they started recommending so the job of the wealth managers also going to be replaced very shortly by this ai team the last point what i wanted to say is about the uh, regulatory compliances as most of you know about the indian companies act 2013 uh, for example today a company is conducting the annual general meeting assume that so 12 o'clock meeting gets over within one hour the company should file what are the major decisions taken in the board they should communicate to the exchange by mail within one hour you can check what i am saying is correct or not you go to bseindia.com in the home page you can see the corporate news scrolling if you go and click on that corporate news scrolling say for instance today one company conducted the agm and what are the major decisions they taken in that meeting when the meeting was wanted so when the mail has come from the company when that information is put up in the public space with along with the time stamp they they do that why that is very important because if, if i if a company send that data to uh, to the exchange one hour late every one hour penalty is being slapped of on what for the company i am supposed to send within one hour now these things are also completely automated so no need to worry about that i program in such a manner as soon as my bog is uh, my uh, my board meeting is over so what are the major decisions taken just i feed the data and said automatically it gets uh, mail is get shorted to the exchange so no need to worry about that so i'm telling you one simple example like there are so many compliances out there from so many acts so everything all those things are being taken care by ai ai is taking care of all those things all the legal compliances part to a greater extent and i said a greater extent you can take somewhere between 90 to 95 percentage okay so these are some of my initial remarks from a man of finance so from finance domain i like to share all these points my initial comments so based upon the other people's input we'll i will come back to you once again thank you thank you professor for your insight on how the ai is implemented in the domain of finance uh, thank you so much
Uh, I now call upon Professor Pradeep Kumar uh, to place before the audience in his observation and comments. Thank you, Gigi, sir, for inviting me for this particular panel discussion. Okay. So my observation is something different that uh, AI is not disruptive. It is constructive more than disruptive. All the people are talking about it is, it is going to be disruptive. It is going to kill all the jobs and other things. It is going to be, uh, what say, that kind of things. Uh, I always used to hear that. But my strong belief is that it is going to be more constructive and it is not going to take any jobs from you also because i feel that once the computer is also introduced at that time the people are talking about that computers are going to take all the jobs but today in india you can see that most of the job providers are became through the computers you can see that and india is became the one of the best service provider in the world if you can take the gdp you can see that thing also and AI is nothing, AI is nothing for my, this is only my view, AI is nothing, it is an extension of data science, extension of data science. You can see that once you are building the AI, you can see that there's a machine learning, deep learning techniques are used to, to train the machines to think on such a way. The thinking is happening in AI is on the basis of structured basis it is happening. These structured basis have its own, what's a, what's a disadvantage is other, which they are not able to think how the human is thinking. Especially human being have a different way of thinking is called intuitive thinking. Intuitive thinking which is happening in human being. It is the most, most advanced level of intelligence what is happening in human. That kind of thinking is not there in the AI. And you can see that the behavioral model of thinking is also there. AI can't detect the behaviors of the human beings or behaviors of the other persons also. That is the main disadvantage of AI, which we can, which the human beings can score more into that, that arena. And another mode of thought is that most of the, most of the thinking nowadays is structured on the basis of behaviors and the patterns related to that. Okay. You, if you take consumers' decision makings or if you take the stock market decisions, all these things are working on the basis of behavior model. AI is only giving a support to build that decisions only. Why AI is doing that? Because AI can take large amount of data and they can structure it in properly and they can build different statistical models to analyze it in a proper way and give it to the human being. You can take the right decision on the basis of that. That's the thing AI is doing. You can, you can work, you can see OpenAI, you can see ChatGPT, all these things. If you, if you take the ChatGPT itself, if you give any question in a different model, you can see the same answers are giving for that particular model also. That is the main drawback of AI. Even though today we are talking more busy on that, but I feel that if you, if you plug that statistical model from the data, AI is gone. AI is gone. This is my critical view on AI. And another thing, another thing that AI within 10 years going to be 10, AI is going to bring more more things into us. Especially I tell you one thing, there is a, one of the great professor called David Chalmers. He is working consciously in uh, synchronized conscious, uh, consciousness, which is, which is the, for us, there is a consciousness is the, these consciousness always help us to think and take the decision on the basis of that. Same way, David Chambliss is also working called synchronized consciousness. How the consciousness is working in a human being, on the basis of that, he is trying to implant that kind of conscious, consciousness in robots also. If that comes, then it is going to be more disruptive. That is the, that is the question which I always ask, whether this synchronized or synthetic consciousness will work or not. Because a lot of research are going on the IB also, a couple of professors also, I am also associated with this kind of consciousness area, working on this consciousness area also. That's why Inley says that we have to train ourselves to, to go beyond all these things. 
because that's why I used to say to my students that build your technical mind so strongly and build your behavior mind. Fuse these two minds in the same pattern. That will overcome the AI or future any kind of technologies in the coming days. So this is my small remarks on AI. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep, uh, for your observation on how the AI is supported. It's a constructive way of approach, not a destructive approach. Is opt for a constructive approach. I now call upon um, Professor Dr. John Robinson to express his views on implementation of AI and business model. Uh, Dr. Nyanda sir, thank you so much for uh, uh, inviting me. I'm in no way connected with the Commerce Department, but when I said I'm going, I'm interested in presenting papers, I'm working in this area, uh, he was so much uh, generous to uh, ask me to be a panel member for this discussion also, so I thank you so much sir. I just wanted to start with a small uh, demo of what we are doing uh, regarding this AI, so we need to understand uh, so I wanted to uh, go into the technical part of uh, the thing. That is, uh, how mathematically we are dealing. Because I am from uh, the Department of Mathematics. So how, how mathematics is into this AI. And of course, definitely commerce is involved. That is what we have been ob observing uh, recently. Because commerce in, uh, involves profit and loss. So our work is to maximize the profit and give it to you. So uh, that's an area called optimization, which we are uh, teaching in mathematics. So when all collaborates, it becomes a very good work. I was happy to see this uh, uh, thing in my table. So uh, suppose uh, I'll choose a student, somebody, and I'm giving uh, this particular, that's uh, right. So you can take whatever you want, but only one. Okay, uh, you, you, you tell people which you took. Uh, it is Mentos. You, you liked Mentos, right? Very good, very good. So, thank you. Simply, I randomly chose uh, him so that... Uh, see, you got different types of chocolates here. So, when I gave him, when I gave him, what he did was, he chose, he chose very carefully the chocolate that he liked very much. So what is happening in our human brain is, we are giving a particular ranking for a particular object which we like most. So actually a mathematical calculation is going inside our brain. That mathematical calculation is very simply called aggregation. So anywhere in AI, you take uh, any computation, when you come to the computation part, the computer does the aggregation uh, the input is being aggregated and it gives you a output and it gives you the best choice. And Asar Solumode, he was uh, telling uh, that AI is uh, like it, it, it is not equal to human brain, but it is a replica of a human brain. So, what we think to some extent the computer can replicate. So, aggregation na in a rumbo simple. You assign some weight to a input. You have inputs, right? What is the input? It's a collection of the chocolates or otherwise you can call them as alternatives. Some 10 alternatives are there. The person has to choose the one he likes the most. So imagine how he chose the most he liked. He gave more weightage to that particular object. So that is what is happening in any AI tool. So we'll be assigning weights. How do you come to a conclusion on the weights? So that is what we people are taking care of. Like mathematicians or data scientists, they provide the weighting vectors to any alternatives that you give based on the preferences. So this involves a lot of decision makers. So uh, data collection. Enormous amount of data is being collected today. You know, ethnic bytes, new, new names they are giving. Uh, that much amount of data is being stored today in the web and solranga so by 2025 they say they uh, they give a name and the name it's not coming to my mind 
So that much amount of data they say will be available for us. You can choose one thing, you can choose one thing, you can choose one thing. That is why, you know, when you go for online shopping, you can open money on Amazon or you can open online shopping on Amazon. So what you like, when you want to purchase, line up and you can see other products. This is all in the aggregation, it's very simple. Aggregation is one thing, sir. You can understand it very simply. The input into the weight vector. So you will have summation xi wi. A very simple mathematical calculation. If you are doing this, you will output the choice. So this is applied in every field. So that is what we are doing. In the calculation, you will do the calculation and the output in different ways. Now, how many aggregations are there? There are thousands and million types of aggregations available. So every person is different. Now, when I gave that person a collection of chocolate, he chose one chocolate. Suppose when I come to another person, you may choose some other chocolate. So the, the aggregation operator itself is different for that person and me and for every other person. So this is all about aggregation and this comes in multiple attribute decision making, which we are currently working in our research field. One area is this. And the other area in computer science, parallelly they call data mining. What is data mining? When large amount of data is given to you. Mining is a word, dictionary word. What is mining? You go to a gold mine and you have a large amount of uh, sand mud particles. Out of that, uh, finally, the gold will be to a very few uh, uh, little in uh, particles, right? So that is what you have. You have large amount of data. By doing data mining, the last you get is only a few very important particles. Suppose I say 1000 alternatives are available with me. And I cannot go around working out with 1000 alternatives every time. So what I want is last five alternatives, if it is with me, I can easily make a choice. So data mining is doing that for you. Imagine you have millions of data and alternatives with you and you at, finally you want only a few pieces of alternatives. So data mining is doing that work for you. Now combined all this work, data dredging is there, data warehousing is there. So we are not more technically into that, the mathematical part we are there. So, combining all these together, the AI takes care of all these things. So, all you need to do is give a data, enter it, and the AI provides you the best choice. So, I need not uh, waste my time in thinking about which is best for me. Now, the machine gives what is best for me. So, that is the thing happening. And what we are into it is, as a teacher of mathematics and a researcher, I am concentrating on the mathematical part, as I said. So, how he did this, I am imagining that and I am converting linguistic term into a mathematical term. Linguistic terms like poor, good, excellent, very good. If you, even if you speak, we will be able to convert that into a mathematical term. Once I convert it into a mathematical term, I have a lot of algorithms. So, I will feed into it and then I will be able to give an answer. So, this is what machines are doing nowadays. But really, you need to have a technical skill in writing programs, but that also has become very easy. Now, when I told one of my project students to do a, a program uh, related to this AI, what he did was all the part of the programs, he had the idea, but he took all the logic from the chat GPT itself. So chat GPT nowadays is providing everything for you. You need not even uh, think about programming and work it. So the machine itself is doing the programming part for you. So what I want to say is it has become very easy and uh, mathematically, you know, it's very, very interesting to see how our brain works to a very little amount we can observe and see. Thank you for this opportunity. Sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Robinson. I think he's a seasoned researcher. He's proving his research activity through practically exposes. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Now we move on to the youngest uh, mind from as the youngest mind from the industry i request hannah to express his views as a youngest corporator um, first of all i like to greet all the panel members the professors and all the students i would like to ja thank gd sir for inviting me um, so i remember presenting a paper on the topic ai back in 2018 in the same stage and I'm glad that topic has become the topic of the conference itself right now. So 
you could see the drastic change, right? And AI isn't a, a new topic, basically. It was in, it was, uh, it has come into a routine back in 1950 itself. But right now it's becoming a booming industry just because of the hottest topic. You know, people run behind trends, right? It isn't a trend basically, but this is livelihood. AI is livelihood because everyone, everyone that's sitting here or in the stage, off stage, we all are datas. We all are datas to some of the company outside. We all are thinking that we are very secure. We are all, we have our data privacy done. There's no data breach. But that's not the thing. The thing that you're using, let's say WhatsApp, Facebook, Insta, everything is data and you are being the data. And to talk about AI, it will become the fourth industrial revolution of the uh, era. So there, there, there's been three industrial revolutions and this will be the fourth industrial revolution. I would like to state an uh, interview, uh, state an interview about Jeff Bezos. He told that uh, I'll run the business until I'm not ready to shut down the business. So if you are ready to change, you will never be lost. But if you're not ready to accept change, you're just lost. That's when constructive and destructive options come in. So if you're not ready to change, you will be laid back. And obviously, you're not going to gain anything out of it. For example, let's talk about Nokia or Eastman Kodak. They were not ready to digitalize their platforms. And right now, they are not even in the market. Maybe they are in the market, but not up to the level. They're just surviving and tiding with the wave, right? And uh, to talk about AI generation or the jobs that will be created by AI, uh, there's a statistics currently uh, that was conducted in 2022. There are three op uh, there are three things to mainly notice. Nine persons, uh, nine percent of jobs may cease because of AI. 37 percentage of jobs will uh, continue to use AI. They'll use it as a complementary action to the existing routine. And 54 percent of the job will, be, uh, will remain unchanged. But I'm not sure of the data. After 20 years, it might be 69 percent of jobs that might get ceased. I mean, it'll totally get lost. And you all would have read the article where uh, uh, India is not ready to accept self-driving uh, self cars because of, uh, you know, about 2.6 million drivers will lose their jobs if that is going to come into the industry. So we as a entity, we have to understand what should be uh, using AI and what should not be using AI. So AI is literally into every field. It's not about BFSI, IT. It's everywhere. So even if you don't want to, it surely it'll come, it'll become a part of your life. And uh, I like to talk about one of the examples. There is a super fast supercomputer, one of the fastest supercomputer in the world, which is named as Tiane 2. So it tried to reproduce uh, our memory cells, but it took uh, about uh, it did the calculation in 33.86. Uh, billion uh, CPS. CPS is calculation per second, but our brain is capable of one exaflop, that is billion CPS per second. So AI can't replicate how you can work. Uh, it can just copy the data just like how he explained us. It will only copy data, but it will never be creative. So one good opportunity or thing that can be done by the government is to invest in least vulnerable sectors, let's say humanity, arts, those are those are the things that can't be replaced by AI because AI isn't creative. It's just copying data, check, check, that's it. So it's better we start investing in these kind of things and, uh, and yeah, there's another uh, topic that I wanted to talk about. There are about 17 million students that's getting graduated every year and only 5.5 million jobs are getting created every year. So can you see the ratio? So when it comes to AI, it will create about 2.6 million jobs and it'll get troubled, quadrupled every year. But the problem is the skill gap. We have to invest in skill gap, uh, get ready to change, start investing in AI, learn AI, adapt to AI. That's the only thing that we could do. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's really uh, interesting facts and figures.
as far as you're concerned with the AI, skill mapping is concerned, yes, it's a high time you have to upskill and reskill, de-skill our knowledge. Otherwise, you're outdated from the industry. Thank you so much. Since you are in the industry, you know the, the impact of this, how skilling is important for survival, the longer sustainability is concerned. Thank you so much, Mr. Hannah. A uh, final uh, panelist, I request uh, Sruti Patel to give his view, her views. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to greet everyone. So uh, thank you, Gigi, so for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, my staff. So uh, it's been honored for me to sit here among the knowledgeable persons here. Like compared to them, my knowledge is like nothing. They have vast experiences. And as uh, Jairam sir said, like it's the first one and the last one. So as <laughs> so, just, so everyone spoke all the points. Like AI has been, I won't take much time. So we can just move to the next session. And as I'm last, I would like just to say about the student's point of view. So you know, AI has been everywhere. And uh, so mostly about 22 to 25, this age of uh, members using 80% of has been dependent on AI. So social media platforms, I would like to give an example about a recent uh, current affairs. Uh, so on recent news uh, is very trending. That is a PM Narendra Modi has posted uh, one picture uh, from Lakshadweep. I guess everyone will be familiar with the topic. So our PM is only in our India, Lakshadweep. And even though he is in here, but this has been a problem to Maldives. Because no one, 60% uh, of Maldives, ex, uh, like people traveling the Maldives depends upon the traveling only because it's a place where everyone goes for travels. And you know, the population of Maldives is just 5 lakhs. So their total GDP depends upon uh, travel agencies and everything from that. And by this one post, 60% of this uh, Maldives GDP has been reduced. So you know, within one day. So this is the future, like nothing has been done and said only just by the comments and everything. And this is the social media platform. and. You know, uh, chat GPT, so they say chat GPT gives everything, uh, all the answers, but it, if you just say, uh, ask one question, like if, if your answers are correct now, chat GPT itself says that, no, the answers are not so accurate. It may be wrong sometimes. So it's not always right. So we should always further depend upon our own minds. So it's, it gives just a structure and that, Actually, you know, this uh, from past all the in international conferences, this AI topic is the most, uh, I guess, the needed topic because uh, the students ourselves, like we should know about the negatives and positives of this. And uh, chat GPT itself says, and its uh, current ratio is on January 2022. It's been updated till that only. So it's the uh, third version. And after that, the latest reports, if you search in that also, it, it won't give results because it's not updated yet. So it's all manual things only, actually. We humans update that, and that that is only goes there, and it's been updated more. As um, you know, there is a future. This is AI right now. Like, uh, So we uh, seeing this all itself is a great thing for us. So. You know, before in school days, we didn't had uh, this PowerPoint screens and all, but now we are used to that every day. And this blue brain, blue eyes concept, I would like to mention that uh, from 2050, I guess the brains of humans will be converted to other humans because, you know, powerful brains like Einstein's and all, we need more. Those brains, no. Uh, so a brain never dies, they say. So that's why AI is going to prepare some type of material, uh, some data which is the brain is transferred to other human so the brains is always alive and we can just develop more with this and i would like to learn many things from the source and my senior so i'm very proud to sit here and thank you everyone for patiently listening okay thank you as a student's perspective yes it's very important to learn new things uh, thank you for your observation and your sharing knowledge on that particular aspects. Uh, now floor is open for QA. Uh, if you have any specific questions to the respective panelist, you can rise and you can pose your questions. Now floor is open for. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, delegates. So my name is Jason and I'm studying second BCom BPM. 
சார் ஐ திங்க் ஐ மே கோ வித் பைலிங்வல் சார் நான் வந்து இப்போது ரீசெண்ட் நம்ம இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸில் ஐ ப ஐ ரிசர்ச் டே பேப்பர் டாபிக் வந்து எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் த இம்பேக்ட் ஆஃப் கன்சியூமர் வெல்பீயிங் ஸோ லைக் நான் பண்ணும்போது எனக்கு வந்து ஒரு இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் வந்து நான் பண்ண ரிசர்ச்சில் எனக்கு ஸ்ட்ரைக் அவுட் ஆச்சு லைக் எப்படின்னா வந்து நம்மளோட ப்ரைவசி வந்து லைக் சாட் ஜிபிடிஸ் வந்து யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறாங்க நம்மளோட டேட்டாஸ் வந்து அவங்க ஸ்டோர் பண்ணி அதுக்கு ரிலேட்டடாக வந்து அவங்க நமக்கு பர்சனலைஸ்ட் ஏஐ சர்வீசஸ் ப்ரொவைட் பண்ணுறாங்க லைக் நமக்கு பிடிச்ச இன்ஃபர்மே நமக்கு பிடிச்ச ப்ராடக்ட்ஸை வந்து என்னோட வெப்சைட்ஸில் அவங்க ஷோ பண்ணுறதா இருக்கட்டும் இல்லைனா நமக்கு என்ன பிடிக்குதுன்னு நம்மளை மானிட்டர் பண்ணுறதா இருக்கட்டும் அதெல்லாம் வந்து அந்த கம்பெனிஸ் வந்து எடுத்து வச்சுக்கிறாங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்கிறதுனால நான் நான் பண்ண கொஸ்டினியர்லேருந்து நிறைய பேர் என்ன வந்து சொல்லியிருந்தாங்கன்னா வந்து லைக் வந்து நாங்கள் சார் ஜிபிடிஸ் மாதிரி இருக்கிற நிறையா அந்த சோர்ஸஸை யூஸ் பண்ணுறதுக்கு நாங்கள் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டடாக இருக்கோம் பட் வி ஹவ் சம் கன்சர்ன் அபவுட் அவர் ப்ரைவசி லெவல் அப்படின்னு நிறைய பேர் வந்து ரெஸ்பாண்ட் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க ஈவன் நானுமே அதான் ஃபீல் பண்ணேன் ஏன்னா எனக்கு என்ன பிடிக்குதுன்னு அது என்னோட விஷ் என்னோட இஷ்டம் லைக் வந்து ஒரு கம்பெனி அவங்க வச்சுருக்காங்க சார் ஜிபிடிஸ் அந்த மாதிரி ஏஐ பாட்ஸ் அவங்க வச்சுருக்காங்க அப்படின்ற ஒரு ரீசனுக்காக அவங்க என் என்கிட்ட கேட்காம என்னோட டேட்டாஸ் யூஸ் பண்ணுறது நான் எந்த விதத்துக்கும் நான் ஒத்துக்க மாட்டேன் லைக் நீங்கள் இப்போது பெரிய டெலிகேட்ஸ் இருக்கீங்க ஸோ நீங்கள் வந்து அந்த கம்பெனிஸ் வந்து இந்த மாதிரிலாம் பண்ணால் வந்து பீப்புள்கிட்ட நல்ல ஒரு ஒப்பீனியன் கிடைக்கும் பீப்புள் வந்து இன்னும் ட்ரஸ்ட் பண்ணி சார் ஜிபிடிஸ் மாதிரி நிறைய ஏஐ வந்து லைக் தே வில் சப்போர்ட் அப்படின்னா வந்து அது எந்த மாதிரிலாம் பண்ணால் வந்து கம்பெனிஸ் கம்பெனிஸ் என்னெல்லாம் பண்ணால் பீப்புள்ஸ் வந்து இன்னும் அதை மோர் கன்சியூம் எப்படி நிறைய பேர் கன்சியூம் பண்ண இது பண்ணுவாங்க அப்படின்னு நீங்கள் கொஞ்சம் சொன்னீங்கன்னா கொஞ்சம் நல்லாயிருக்கும் சார் தேங்க்யூ மார்க்கெட்டிங் டொமைன் யூ கேன் மென்ஷன் தேனலிஸ் நேம் answer is the okay for regarding the privacy there are two laws are there one is called uh, global data protection law is also there in european union it is already passed in india uh, three months before there is a data protection personal data protection bill is also came into the came into the parliament and it is also passed it clearly mention about the privacy clearly mention about the privacy and in constitution also article 21 it is completely related with art, uh, with the uh, right to privacy is also there so uh, if chat gpt or anything anything you can see that uh, once noam chomsky uh, especially talk about this he talked he said that uh, chat gpt is nothing it is an intruder into the privacy of the persons this is the word which is used by the noam chomsky at that time so chat gpt is to be considered as an intruder in the privacy is is clearly that you can see that how the data is fetched by the chat gpt and it is processed and given to you as per the questions what you raised and in the well being perspective two perspective we can take in law perspective and well being perspective also uh, law perspective law will protect now the stringent laws are there uh, in america also there is a privacy law is also there now most probably within couple of years global privacy will person data protection privacy will also come so that will take care the law will take care of that course of action but in well being perspective uh, it is more than chat gpt or more than technological thing because the well being is mostly associated with the the person who consumes it you got i hope so you got you got my my point of view so in that perspective how it is going to work we have to do more research into that okay this is my point um, see this uh, this is more or less like an Im- impulsive uh, purchase and impulsive uh, பைங் பேட்டர்ன் இட் ஹஸ் பீன் தேர் ஃபார் சென்ச்சுரிஸ் இப்போ நீங்கள் ஒரு கடைக்கு போகிறீங்க கடையில் ஒரு நிறைய சாக்லேட்ஸ் இருக்குது முன்னாடி அடிக்க வச்ச ஜாரில் டிஸ்பிளே பண்ணுற சாக்லேட் தான் உங்கள் மைண்டு வந்து கொஞ்சம் எடுக்க இது பண்ணும் முந்தி வந்து நம்ம சாரீ ஷாப்பில் இல்லாட்டி ட்ரெஸ் ஷாப்பில் போனால் ஒரு வேரிங் ரூம் இருக்காது இன்றைக்கி சாரியே வந்து ஃபுல்லாக ட்ரெஸ் பண்ணி பார்க்குற அளவுக்கு வந்து இது பண்ணுறாங்க ஸோ அதை பார்த்து மற்றவங்க வந்து அப்சர்வ் அப்சர்வே அந்த இம்பல்ஸ் வந்து க்ரியேட் பண்ணுது what the technology is helping is ipo namakku vandu adu limited resources anga 10 jar da irukna this will show 100 jars of chocolates so you uh, the now the thing is it's a problem of plenty and the impulse vandu iniki technology vandu drive pannudhu adha da that is what uh, happening but uh, uh, again uh, the mind uh, the um, uh, right brain uh, left brain and the cognizance la varumbodhu that uh, it it acts very faster 
நீங்கள் வந்து உடனே வந்து என்ன பண்ணுறீங்கன்னா ஒரு ப்ராடக்ட்டுக்கு வாங்கலான்னு போகிறீங்க ஒரு பென் வாங்கலான்னு இப்போ அமேசான் சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி நீங்கள் போனீங்கன்னா அது பத்து பென்னு அதோட அலைடு ப்ராடக்ட்ஸையும் காமிக்கும் முந்தி வந்து வி டின்ட் ஹாவ் எனி அதர் ரிசோர்ஸஸ் வி ஹேட் ஒன்லி ஒன் பென் ஸோ நவ் தி பென் இஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் ப்ளஸ் அலைடு பென்னு கூட வேறு மாதிரி இருக்கிறது அதையும் இது ப்ராம் பண்ணும்போது உங்கள் பர்ச்சேஸ் கெப்பபிலிட்டி இஸ் இன்க்ரீஸிங் ஸோ தேட் இஸ் ஹவு தி கிரெடிட் கார்டு யூசேஜ் இஸ் ஆல்சோ இன்க்ரீஸிங் so it's a vicious uh, cycle it's it's all marketing gimmicks if you can say that way but uh, it is the enna uh, solradhu reality in a different form which is well uh, supported by the technology so i have to add one point to jairam sir there is called uh, classical book which is written by daniel kahneman thinking fast and slow is the there's a classical book in that uh, chapter 2 he says about system 1 system 2 thought is the and uh, once you are going to purchase one thing how that hercusist in 1985 he written an article called judgment Her- hercusist that copy of that particular article is uh, in that particular book he says how this hercusist and judgment is happening in you once you are going to purchase a one particular product and on the basis of that the well being is also connected with that that's the as the jaram sir is always saying so i am adding to that particular point you read that particular article you will get some insights how it is affecting how it is connected with the well being of the consumers okay especially chapter 2 system 1 system 2 thought is the he talks about that how the system 1 is working how the system 2 is working how it is related with the purchase of the consumers all these things he talks about that okay thank you Hello, sir. Uh, I am Anand Professor from Commerce Department, sir. My question is, see, whenever a new technology comes into picture, right, uh, I see a chart, like there is a chart called Gaunt chart, where uh, the level of excitement on the x-axis and the technology on the y-axis. Usually, any new, new technology comes to rise. The tech evangelist, the enthusiast, right, they take it up, they overhype it in the beginning. The first stage, it will be very hyped, then it will become deletionment, then it will get moderated. which stage we are we now in terms of ai are we in the overhyping stage or are we in the moderating stage because as i read lot of journals and papers ai 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 it's okay it's ai but the use case is very very limited as far as i see as professor said i also worked in finance industry the use case is very limited and come and when we think about india i know another concern as a professor is we are churning out graduates after graduates we need a lot of jobs if industry takes ai as an excuse to increase our automation and let's move on to more profitability where i'm going to employ these when it graduates so this is my question sir so you asked two questions i will take the second question first okay you said that uh, she already gave some stats about how many millions of graduates are graduating out of the university every year 7 million something like that my uh, my question back to you how many of them are employable how many of them are employable graduates see still we are teaching uh, you know the outdated subjects to the students sir. so while coming from the my home to this place i was asking uh, anand what courses you are teaching he said he is teaching uh, financial accounting too i asked uh, what is what do you teach in financial accounting too he said he is teaching partnership act 1932 now partnership act 1932 exist only in the textbook we already moved to llp limited liability partnership form so are we teaching the current topics to the students big no we are teaching the same old partnership act branch accounts head office account bank reconciliation statement all those things are outdated today so we need to teach the students the you know the updated curricula updated syllabus so that we can uh, the students will be the more employable graduates so that is what is my answer for the second question first for first question in which part of the life cycle of ai and the and the we are the really i have no clue maybe my co panelists can answer thank you sir thank you so much first question uh, from my perspective it's only my perspective from what i comprehended okay uh, for my thought is that ai is over hyped is clearly it is over i really wanted that word from you sir <laughs> <laughs> uh, i am too critical on that particular point because i used to say that is over hyped it is over hyped but it consequences is the i am telling you its consequences is the but we can't uh negate the human being once the ai is come i'm sure on that that's the thing which i earlier i mentioned about that 
because I strongly believe that AI is nothing. It is an extension of data sets or data science. Clear on that. Once I told you structured programming, stat statistical model of that prince, it is the. But whether AI will take the jobs, it's a crucial question. We have to ask, now ask that particular question always. But I tell you one thing, even though the AI take the, take the jobs, but it create the jobs also, it, it is creating the jobs also. But we have to occupy ourselves what the jobs created by the AI. There is a classical article which is written in uh, Psychology Magazine, which is published by American Psychological Association. They are training the psychologists to equipy with the AI. How they are training the psychologists to equipy with the AI that the skill sets what is created by the AI, you have to train the students to build the skill sets what the AI is created. So we have to, uh, what they what say, we have to think on that way. What is going to happen once the AI is implemented in this particular sector or what are the skill sets is going to generate once the AI is implemented in this particular sector. For me, from my perspective, I used to say to my students that develop a tech mind always for you. Tech mind means, once you are, you are occupied to develop a tech mind means, that tech mind will help the students to adapt with any environment which is created by the technology. AI is also to be considered as a technology. So once you are occupied to develop that tech mind, it is quite easy for them to adapt with any technology the future will come. So first and foremost, we have to train the students the think, thinking called mathematical thinking. Mathematical thinking, what's called, it is in another way we have to say that conditional thinking. You have to develop the students continuously, you have to develop that thinking among the students. That will train them to adapt with anything in the, in the world. We can't negate the AI, especially in the manufacturing sector. I, I tell you one thing, uh, if the India is going in 7 pace or 7-8% GDP growth, how much employment is created? We have to check on that particular question. We have to look into that particular question, especially the corporates. Corporates are not creating that much of job, but the MSME sector is creating the job. Why the MSME sector is creating the job? If we ask all these questions, we can, we can see that how it is going to work. If growth is there, should be job should be there. This is my perspective. If the job is not replicating or the job is not creating means that growth is not a growth. So even I am very concerned about the inclusiveness. Sir. Any growth has to be inclusive for all sections of the people. For example, if AI only brings in the allied jobs or highly service jobs, then we leave behind a lot of you know blue collars and white collars. Of course, they are also human beings. We need to feed them. We need to employ them. But the thing is, as you said, we'll have to train them parallelly along with the AI so that they will be employed later on. Absolutely. I tell you one thing. What is the problem? Uh, last, uh, last couple of years, we can see that our public policy is not that much visioned. That's the basic problem what we are facing now also. In our education sector also, we are not that much visioned. You will take US, how they are training the young guns to build themselves to for 25 years or 30 years. Whether our education institutions are looking like that or our public policies are working on that angle or not. That's a big question again we have to ask. Answer. So I strongly believe that inclusiveness is the most important thing for the growth. Any mode of growth is creating means you should carry that growth what say evenly distributed in in the society then only that growth will uh, have a positive impact in society this is thank you sir. thank you sir thank you sir i can take up another one question yes, sir, the, one question. Yeah. Uh, sir good afternoon sir i am dr manivaran from department of commerce I have a simple question to be answered by you. I find it so difficult to understand uh, how, please, could you please tell me how artificial intelligence impact on business communication? Could you please tell me something about this? How artificial in intelligence impact on business communication? Okay. How many of you use Grammarly? Have you heard of Grammarly? I am familiar with English grammar, sir. And how many of you are active in LinkedIn? I'm a voracious learner. Okay. 
See, um, uh, these are all now the very effective tools to enhance your communication. See, Grammarly not only corrects your uh, letters, you know, the pronunciation, uh, giving a constructive uh, uh, verbs uh, to make the uh, uh, words with the correct uh, this thing, but it also prompts you every week. Or report alavaru. Hey, you have done this. You are better than the others. You are uh, doing like this. So it, what it does is, So that is the prompt engine which uh, the Grammarly and others do. LinkedIn on the other uh, side, no? See, we have a, our inhibitions. Sir, I am a Tamil medical sir. I am a Tamil medical sir. I am a convent education. And the mindset of break is LinkedIn. Now, sir, I am not an engineer. I am not a techie. I am a commerce teacher. CA Mudice, I am Calcutta, I have become a techie. Iniki, he knows better about AA, better about uh, ML, uh, or whatever uh, this thing. You know? It is his passion and driven. So, either in the communication level, we can develop or ask you or our own, definitely we can involve. That is LinkedIn, it prompts us, it gives us a confidence. If you are more editor, if you are more Sadhana Panikara, now FB Instagram alone, I will dilute it. But of course, Instagram learning a real up tower and area repeaturki, and again, area A information now the other than that. Category Instagram, Nama Adala, Pakar Villa. Of course, it's the mind uh, this thing. But LinkedIn helps you where you can definitely develop your communication. That's why you can do it. That's why you can do it. If you impulse purchase, it instills in you the mind. We can do it. Okay. So, we can do it first. 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 And with a, with a constructive and a consistency, LinkedIn will help you to become an outstanding person. LinkedIn will help you to become an outstanding person. Irrespective of the industry, whether it is academics or whatever industry, Nareya Berg job Kadirke, Nareya Berg and the social, uh, what do you call the branding, it has enhanced. So that's how it is helping. Adhikallam in the AA, all these tools, that's how it is prompting. But grammarly, you use it, definitely it help you to make a very constructive email or a constructive letter. Adhikappra ni the word liya, varag liya, save bani, you make it. So that is one uh, good uh, communication tool. Hope I am answering at least to some extent. Thank you. Yeah. It is uh, AI is simply polishing your language. It is not communicating your mind. First and foremost, you have to draft your letters in whatever word in your mind. Then AI will support you to polish that and to send to your concerned person. This is my my way of talk because. It is only creating a supportive role in communication. Communication is something what is there in your mind, you are communicating to another person through the words. It is only a supporting, supporting AI is only a supporting role on that. This is my way of and friends, uh, the time to sum up the entire discussion. No, no. Yeah. As far as concerned with uh, the A business adoption and implementation is concerned, there are interesting data. Uh, when I say interesting data, when I went through some of the interesting uh, research papers, specifically in Bloomberg, uh, it reveals that the global artificial intelligence. It reveals that uh, the artificial intelligence market value is tremendous. Thank you. As far as concerned with the 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 the, the, the present scenario of. Uh, artificial intelligence in the global market that's for the bloomberg uh, one of the one of these statistical information reveals that the market value of the ai 
the estimated market value of intelligent market uh, sorry uh, artificial intelligence almost 135 billion dollar in the year 2032 including transformation of different uh, segmentation segmentation like uh, organization building healthcare sector agriculture education smart mobility and transportation that's how this the market the tremendous growth is happening under the artificial under artificial intelligence segmentation is concerned and also one of the important uh, segment one of the important uh, what is statistical data reveals that as far as concerned with our indian uh, artificial intelligence segmentation is concerned uh, one of the research article, one of the statistical information from Accenture. In recent research article it report, it reveals that AI to boost Indian, Indian annual growth rate by 1.3 percentage by 2035. You can see, you can see the estimated, the projected growth of artificial intelligence for the next for, for five years or 10 years or 15 years down the line. Even from the panel members, they have argued different aspects of artificial intelligence, specifically from skill mapping, skill uh, reskilling, upskilling, de-skilling of uh, artificial intelligence in the respective domain areas. As a student, as a corporate leaders, there's a high time you have to upskill our knowledge on artificial intelligence is concerned. You know, the, 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 the current market scenario, the current business scenario, specifically the technological landscape, without this one of the artificial intelligence become one of the cornerstone for innovation. If you're not ready to set up, if you're not ready to change your mindset, especially if students have gathered here, it's a high time you have to rethink, redesign your thinking process. That's what Professor Pradeep also again and again he was emphasized on critical thinking. Critical thinking is very important. Tech savvy, uh, critical thinking, uh, using of various technological, uh, technological tools, ICT tools, information technology tools for your upskilling, reskilling of domain knowledge. That's very important. Don't be a bookholics. You have to think out of box thinking is very important. Thanks to technology, after COVID-19, a lot of new transformation is taking place, even in the field of education. I have not, we have not seen uh, Google Meet. We have heard about the Google Meet. We heard about MS Teams, but we are forced to use Google Meet or MS Teams during the pandemic period. Some of the faculty members, we are not, we struggle to how to log in the Google Meet or MS Teams, the technological interventions directly or directly and directly, it influences our upskilling, reskilling process. That's what all the four, five panel members, the, the thinking process, almost same wavelength. So what I want to conclude from the entire process of entire discussion part of this particular discussion is this very important. You have to focus on the different aspects of critical thinking, domain knowledge, upskilling of domain knowledge, reskilling of domain knowledge, be it artificial intelligence, or machine learning, or deep learning, neural networks. There is neural network also very important. A lot of the process, psychological behavior can be identified by incorporating neural networking, NLP, neural network programming. That's very important. This is the this is the place. This is the world we are we are, we are living. The technological driven innovation driven world. So I, I can conclude that there is there is no doubt that AI is transformative. Yes, we believe and we uh, we believe and also we accept in every aspect, every walks of life. But it's up to us to make it more and more transparent. That's very important. Trans when I say the transpar transparency, more accurate, or probably scalable and 
adoptable. That is how we, that is how the important aspect of uh, implementation of artificial intelligence in terms of application of dif different business processes. In, in, in the business ter terminology, we have BPR, business process re-engineering. You have to go back and you have to learn and learn new things by adopting new technology in your business process. BP, business process is very, very important. Even for enterprise resource planning, ERP. All these processes are driven by data driven world. All the processes driven by BPR or enterprises resource planning. So what I want to conclude from the entire discussion, we have a very good panel members. We started with Professor uh, Mr. Uh, Jairam. Is exp he expressed views on how the multimedia, specifically multimedia, influence uh, the print media influence artificial intelligence to reach out the potential consumer is concerned. But other, there are other sides of influence of artificial intelligence in multimedia uh, print side is concerned. Then we have very good very good observation from Professor Saravanan. Uh, he expressed about how the algorithm this in. Uh, Algor trading has influenced the business process. And he's expressed of a tra traditional way of approach and technological way of approach in, in our marketing, specifically your trading is concerned. It, it totally transformed. It totally transformed your business perspective. That's what we express from uh, expression from Dr. Sarvanan, uh, specifically uh, how the fraud detected through influence of uh, what you call uh, artificial intelligence, tracking of a fraud, tracking of a transaction, credit scoring, wealth management, what not. All the process very important, highly influenced by artificial intelligence. And regulatory compliance, uh, regulatory compliance is very important. That's what you mentioned about as soon as you complete your proceedings of your meeting, be it AGM or EGM, you have to immediately have to upload the data in the public domain. Public can view, public can express the views also. That's, a, that's how our the, the current uh, Indian Indian market also move forward. Then we have a very good very good expression views from Mr. Pradeep. He expresses his machine how the machine learning is very important, how the deep learning is very important, not, how this neutral network program is very important as far as concerned your deep learning is concerned, technological driven or industry is his mainly emphasis on AI is not a disruptive model. That's what, it's a constructive model. From his entire discussion, he emphasizes more, he emphasizes on constructive model is concerned. Connectivity, collaboration, behavioral model, inducing the behavioral model. That's, that's, that's a very important aspect. A is supporting, supporting, A is supports this is very important as far as concerns, business model is concerned. Then we have uh, Professor John Robinson, uh, he, has, he has expressed his views in fantastically, specifically a real-time experience. Okay, uh, real-time experience. I express, uh, I, I really express my gratitude to Professor Johnson, the way he expressed how the neural network, how the uh, transformation uh, taking place in the uh, AA system is concerned. Then we have a, a young panelist, Sruti, uh, young panelist, Hena. He expressed about how the skilling is very important. He emphasized more on skilling pattern, upskilling, reskilling. Since he's, since he's just completed graduation, post graduate into the field, he knows the, what is the expectations. He knows the, what is the uh, industry expectation. That's what even higher education institution also try to revamp the syllabi. You have to train, you have to mold, and you have to produce students for industry ready students not for the book colleagues. So as a student, as a, as a, uh, as a education fraternity, it's a high time you have to think and you have to redesign, revamp our curriculum. That's what thanks to national education policy. National education policies is more on more and more emphasis on, uh, more on more emphasis on your, uh, what do you call, vocational education. Vocational education, employability skill has to be inject during the course of period of your three years program or four years program in the campus. That's a very fantastic information about the skilling, upskilling of uh, knowledge in the respect domain area. Then finally, we have Sruti Patel. He's expressed his view on how the social media connected different social media platform to connect 
to connect each other to express views and other things. So th these are the observations from each panel members. I, uh, so what I want to conclude is this is the time you have, this is the high time you have to upskill your knowledge. If you're not ready to change your mindset to adopt the new technology, you're totally outdated from the industry. Survival is a question mark. Sustainability is very, uh, very question mark. So thanks to all the uh, uh, listeners uh, for your patient listening. I'll, I'll express my gratitude to all the panel fellow panel members for your views and expression, uh, views and observation on the respective domain areas. Thanks a lot. God bless. Thank you, dignitaries. We are really enlightened to have to hear the application of AI in various sectors. It was a very informative session. I now invite Dr. Mutumina, Assistant Professor in Commerce, to propose the thank you note. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Department of Commerce, I extend my sincere thanks to each one of our esteemed panel members for gracing us with their expertise and sharing their valuable insights. First, I thank Dr. Raja Jabba Singh for his invaluable contribution as a moderator in the panel discussion. Thank you, sir. I thank Sri J. Raman for his ability to share the key concepts and practical ideas of AI in printing industry in an interesting way. Uh, thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Saravanan for his willingness to participate in the discussion and share his valuable views about AI on investments and fraud detection, credit scoring, etc. Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Pradeep Kumar for the persuasiveness and thoughtfulness of his comments on AI being constructive. Thank you, sir. I also thank Dr. John Robinson for the effort he has taken to share his thoughts on AI in aggregation and data mining with us. Thank you, sir. I thank Ms. Hannah for her spot on and timely comments on adapting to AI. I believe that we can be benefited immediately from it. Thank you, Hannah. I thank Shruti Patel of 3rd Become CA for her participation in the panel discussion and sharing her views from the students' perspective. Thank you, Shruti. It was an honor to have all of you on this panel. We know that your time is precious and we are immensely grateful that you were able to carve out some time with us. Thank you for helping us make this event a great success. Last but not the least, I would like to extend my appreciation to the audience and thank for their active participation. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, we are at the la later part of today's session, which is the valediction ceremony. Kindly be seated in your respective places. The valediction ceremony will begin in a moment.
Check this. Check. Check this. Dear students, principal ma'am is about to arrive.
Dear participants, please maintain silence. We are about to begin our valediction ceremony. Dear participants, please rise to your feet as the dignitaries are arriving. Good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you for the valediction ceremony of the two-day international conference on AI. Music is a piece of art that goes through the years and straight to the heart. I invite our department choir to invoke God's presence. Love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise. Be the mighty hand and an outstretched arm. This love endures forever, for the life that's been reborn. This love endures. 
us forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever and ever thank you team please be seated I humbly request Dr. M. Anushya, Coordinator, BCom Fintech, to welcome the gathering. Good afternoon, respected principal, esteemed chief guest, head of the department, faculty members, and my dear students. A warm and cordial welcome to the valediction of this extraordinary international conference on artificial intelligence. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you as we conclude this reverting journey of intellectual exploration. For these two days, we have been privileged to witness an impressive array of research presentations, each one a testament to the dedication, passion, and innovation that propels the academic community forward. It is my honor to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Josephine Ma'am, Vice Principal, Holy Cross College, Trichy. Ma'am, we are indeed grateful for, for your gracious presence and thank you for accepting the invitation to address the gathering. Thank you so much. I welcome you all, ma'am. <coughs> it is with great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to our principal, Dr. Princey Marin Ma'am. She is not just the administrative head of our institution, but also a visionary leader whose guidance has been instrumental in fostering a culture of academic excellence. I welcome you, ma'am. <laughs> the essence of great leadership is influence and not authority. With this note, I would like to welcome our respected head of the department, Dr. Jean Yandrat, sir, whose encouragement and support has helped us achieve our milestones. Without him, this conference would not have been possible. I welcome you, sir. <clears throat> I extend my warm welcome to all the panel members of today's panel discussion and Mr. Imran and Mr. Aravind from ISDC to this valedictory function. Welcome you, sir. Okay. <laughs> I extend a warm welcome to the faculty members and students who have participated in this conference from various other colleges. Your enthusiasm, intellectual curiosity, and committed to knowledge sharing has truly made this event a dynamic and enriching experience for everyone involved. I welcome you all. Next, I would like to welcome all the coordinators and faculty members of Bishop Eva College who have played an important role in making this conference a reality. I welcome you all. <coughs> A warm welcome to the organizing committee and volunteers and students of the department who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Your commitment to excellence has been the driving force behind the success of this conference. I welcome you all. <clears throat> As we conclude this event, let us celebrate not just the winners, but every participant who has been an integral part of this conference. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to everyone present here. I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Honor is something that can't be given. Instead, it has to be earned. I humbly request our principal, Dr. Princey Merlin, to honor our chief guest, Dr. V. Josephine Lords D. Rose, Vice Principal, Holy Cross College, Trichy.
I request Dr. G. Nyan Raj, Head Department of Commerce, to honor our principal. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your presence. Dr. Josephine is a passionate and enthusiastic professor with 17 years of professional experience in teaching, marketing, research methodology, law and accounting. Madam is a proactive worker who chartered departments, UGC add-on courses and clubs. She has contributed professional data management and report consolidation a score committee member in NAC core groups, IQAC, and compiled intricate data as nodal officer for All India Survey on Higher Education. Madam has an unquenchable thirst for research and involved in publications of 33 research articles and has successfully supervised four PhD students in conducting their thesis. She has chaired as resource person for various conferences and an expert member of NAC parameter review. Beyond teaching and leadership skills, Dr. Josephine is someone who believes in enthusiasm and high work ethic that creates a meaningful impact on student engagement and development. It is our privilege to have you in our midst, ma'am. We kindly request you to address the gathering. A very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. My warm wishes to the dignitaries on the days of the days, the speakers of the day, and uh, faculties from other prestigious institutions, faculty of this institution, and the participants of the conference. Uh, for the past two days, you must have heard a lot of deliberations about artificial intelligence, and I won't take much of your time. I would like to share a few thoughts of mine on artificial intelligence. Um, technology has changed the way we do business now. Before, a few decades before, it was information system and automation which has enabled information system. But now, it is artificial intelligence. Now, with artificial intelligence, before it was developing the skills of people to thrive in business. But now, today, in thrive, to thrive in business, we are developing intelligence. We are replicating human thinking. That's what we do in artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence has been spoken of uh, in recent years, but when you date back to it, the inventors of artificial intelligence were in the 15th century. They have invented uh, mechanical cranks of men. So the first um, Ottomans, they call it as Ottomans, those Ottomans were developed as a German warriors. They had mechanical cranks. They used to move their hands and legs with pulleys. That was the first invention where we started with automation. That was without any human intervention. So that is what we call as our first invention in artificial invention, artificial intelligence. Even before we coined the word artificial intelligence, we invented those sort of uh, missions that had nearly no, that were independent of human uh, uh, dependence, right? Now, after um, this happened in the 15th century, now after the 15th century, we had even Leonardo da Vinci writing about or sketching certain uh, pictures about um, Ottomans. Ottomans are, uh, um, like I said, it is the Germanist warriors, like Germanist warriors. Now, looking at those sketches, even the NASA scientists have developed um, robots. The robots have been developed with the sketches of Leonardo da Vinci and we have proof for that also. So he had been the man who had been pioneering artificial intelligence. It was only after a conference in 1950 that we have coined the word artificial intelligence even. That's technically in the 20th century, mid half of the 20th century. Now, 
after we have coined the word artificial intelligence, there was even a conference in New, uh, it was a fair, not a conference, it was a fair in New York where they had about the world of tomorrow. Then, it was almost in 1940s, there they had a robot. It was, uh, we speak to the robot through a wire which is connected to a receiver, like the old telephones which we have. The robot was connected to a speaker. And when you ask the robot to say his name, he introduces himself. That was done in 1940s in New York in a fair. And after this only, we have started uh, building robots in NASA even. Okay. So this is how artificial intelligence has been. With that, we started with mission learning. So in, we incorporated mission learning and LISP and all these things to program the data inside the expert system we have found out. Now, after into all this, knowingly or unknowingly, today we are using artificial intelligence in our daily lives from the mobile we have in hand. We use virtual assistants to help us in every task of our daily life. So knowingly or unknowingly, we are using artificial intelligence in our life. So as comma students, so you should know all the areas in which artificial intelligence is being uh, used. We sit inside our house, we watch Netflix. Uh, the, they recommend the movies which we need to see the next. That is also done by machine learning. They learn your wish lists. From your wish list, they give you the next films which you would like to watch. It is the same when you go to browse through Google also. They give you the recommendations which you wish to see next. So they record all those things which you have been seeing frequently. So that pops up when you have, when you wish to browse anything on your network. So all this is done by artificial intelligence. Now all of us, we use two wheelers and four wheelers mostly. The count of four wheelers on road has been increasing. Now we have, we have put our vehicles in autopilot mode. And there are researches going on in, to find out driverless vehicles. So we are on the way to find out driverless vehicles today, even from the production of automobiles. Robots are used for the production of automobiles. We have sensors fit in all our manufacturing units uh, in developed countries to see that the process, the uh, manufacturing process is going on as per their own quality controls. So even microphones detect the sounds and if there is a frequency change in the noise in the operation also, that detects the fault in the quality of the automobile which is being produced. Suppose we jam a car, just with a photo and uploading the documents, it clears our insurance processes very easily. So artificial intelligence has taken it us to that forward in all our day-to-day -day activities. When you move to an hospital, hospitals, they have started comparing every thread of your organ to detect the diseases which you might possibly get. So they just compare images with the vision itself. They just tell you what are the possible threats which you can get. Likewise, even a patient, smart patient care unit is developed. The smart patient care unit has only the patient inside. And the entire room is being plugged with sensors and microphones. So that with every move of the patient, that will detect what is required, what medication is required for the patient. So healthcare is also moving to a, a fastly towards the artificial intelligence. Like that, every area in its own has been improving. The very thing that if you want to book yourself a hotel or if you want to um, um, book yourself a travel, then you, you browse through the nets. You have your own optimized rates at which you want to, uh, economy rates at which you want to find a room in a hotel or you want to book a cottage automatically you give your own inputs. Machine learning does all the dot, uh, data uh, survey inside. 
similar preferences given have been taken or if you yourself has already browsed through that will give your whatever you want to decide whatever you want to choose customized preferences come on the first page when you give your inputs there all this is designed by artificial intelligence using machine learning so knowingly or unknowingly every time we click google google is using our data through machine learning and programming languages they use our own vision our own sound and they do a lot of research to give our own personalized output to what extent we are aware the impact of artificial intelligence in our life is a question mark but still we have artificial intelligence in all aspects of our life so as graduates when you go out so it is your duty we only embed seeds through the conference so it is you who have to nurture all those ideas within you it is you who will have to nurture it and reap the benefits out of these conference so the success of this conference depends upon what you take away from these idea inputs my best wishes and thank you for the opportunity god bless thank you ma'am for briefing us on ai and its application on various sectors a principal dr prince merlin has served as the dean and coordinator of iqac since 2020 after serving as the associate dean for 5 years madam is an expert in data analysis pertaining to parameters of institutional development and suggests measure to ensure quality in academic and administrative practices of the college under her stewardship as dean of iqac the college is reaccredited at the a++ grade by nac in the fourth cycle with a cgpa of 3.69 out of 4 and the college is ranked 34th at national level by mhrd through nar of 2023 ma'am is also heading the department of chemistry since june 2018 she has published 94 scientific articles in journals of national and international repute and has guided 5 phd scholars and 23 mphil scholars she has completed two major projects her areas of specialization are material science electrochemistry organic light emitting diodes and supercapacitor materials madam also holds a patent and besides her research and academic accomplishments dr prince merlin is committed to the cause of teaching and finds joy in spending time with students and helping them realize their true potential it is our pleasure to have you amidst us ma'am we kindly request you to address the gathering distinguished chief guest of uh, today's program esteemed speakers of the today conference head of the department dr nyanrat sir the coordinator dr samuel the organizers of the today international conference faculty members from other institutions from our own commerce department from other departments my dear student friends good afternoon greetings to all of you it's a real honor and privilege for me to be part of this valedictory function first of all i wish to congratulate the head of the department and faculty members and the students the association office bearers for their wonderful initiative in organizing this need based conference so as a visionary sir has planned to organize this two day international conference my sincere appreciation to the organizers and all the faculty members and students of the department of commerce uh, our uh, commerce department is one of the potential departments in our institution contributing for the credits of our institution so it again they have done a very wonderful job in introducing this artificial intelligence for the benefit of our students my sincere thanks and appreciation to all the expert members from various uh, sectors academicians industry experts practitioners 
for sharing their valuable time to motivate and guide our young minds of Bishop Biba. My thanks to all of them. Just I would like to share my own thoughts related to this artificial intelligence. Uh, as the time is very crucial for you to conclude the session. I won't take much time. Uh, my humble request to my dear students is to learn inquiry-based learning. We, um, people, we are not exposed to that much level when we completed our graduation or post-graduation. But now, due to the advancement in technology, you are having a lot of information, data mining, data matching, data um, drafting, data modeling, all these fields are emerging out. And particularly, the artificial intelligence is digging its way into all the fields across the disciplines. Therefore, the students should learn inquiry-based learning as well as the interdisciplinary approach. Why I am particular about this interdisciplinary approach? Recently, I read an article on this water bear. This is, um, I read in a uh, very simple article called Arivial Tulir. So it's an animal, it's a creature, very microorganism, which can survive in the space. We know that uh, the space is completely deprived of oxygen. Therefore, any organism uh, cannot survive in the space. But this particular creature, this water bear, it's a very microorganism. Uh, when it has a um, um, blessing uh, called the protein, which can retain water, and after uh, dehydration, after removing the water, it can still live. That's a mechanism identified by the scientists. But along with the aircraft, when that microorganism was sent to the space, and uh, they thought the, the microorganism cannot live in that space. But after coming back to land, they identified that on spraying water on that microorganism, it can come to life. So now the scientists, they identified that by creating a uh, material which can mimic this particular mechanism, we can create robots which can survive in space or in any planets. Such an advancement is going on in research. That's why these types of um, conferences are being organized to motivate and energize our young minds. Therefore, I, my humble request um, to all the students to explore, to come up with some ideas. So I hope that this particular conference would have um, initiated your, kindled your interest in thinking at a basic root level. If you have some innovative ideas, if you come up with the proper uh, schemes or plans or models, after um, going through the expert opinion or after consulting with the experts in the field, definitely you can come up with very good product. So this particular conference is being organized in order to energize our students and to come up with novel uh, ideas or uh, new projects or new products. The product, it doesn't mean that it's a physical product. It's a technology product or it may be a tool or it may be a, a software or it may be a product. Anything is possible, but uh, this, is, this should be for the benefit of the human beings. Why I am insisting, it's, um, we have to take into consideration the ethical aspects related to artificial intelligence. So whenever we probe into any area, we should keep in mind three things. We are creating anything, whether it is an innovative or noble product or whatever be the product, it should have a societal impact, it should have an ethical implications, and, and it should support our day-to-day -day living. So this artificial intelligence is digging its uh, law in different sectors, finance, health, education, agri, and all sorts of fields. Nowadays, 
medicine in the field of medicine by making use of the digital imaging and uh, all sorts of techniques are used to come up with many novel ideas so my request to all my dear students to uh, move with the experts and to interact with them continuously i hope you would have all noted noted down the mail id of all the experts who have shared the various ideas so continue to interact with them make use of their guidance and come up with uh, novel ideas and novel products or novel schemes in order to get credentials in your future so um, all the very best to uh, the department of uh, commerce hope uh, with the support of all the experts we will uh, in launch a new uh, live labs for the benefit of our students it's in our mind and i request all the faculty members particularly the head of the department the coordinators to come up with the right proposal to launch one uh, live lab of uh, first of its kind in the arts and science uh, colleges to for the benefit of our students so uh, my humble request uh, to uh, the all the teachers of the department to interact with the uh, experts and to come up with a proposal so that we can have a wonderful platform for our students. So once again, my hearty congratulations to the organizers, particularly to the head of the department and all the faculty members and students friends. Wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your encouragement. We assure you that we'll upskill ourselves in the days to come. Let us now listen to the report on the two-day international conference on AI application and adoption in business. I kindly request Dr. C. Priscilla to present the report. Good afternoon, one and all gathered here. Respected dignitaries on the dais, the invitees, students, and my colleagues. Herewith, I'm presenting the gist of presentation and interaction of this two-day international conference on AI adoption and application on business organized by PG Department of Commerce, Bishop College, Trichy on 9th and 10th January 2024 in association with ISDC, Knowledge Partner Business Standards. This international conference has received an overwhelming responses with 2,000 students, participants and researchers. The inaugural ceremony begins with a invocation song, our beloved head welcomed the dignitaries. The presidential address was delivered by Dr. Victor Lazarus, Principal, Bishop, College, Bishop Thorpe College, Taraburam. Dr. B. Hanna, Coordinator of BCOM's International Accounting, introduced the inaugural address speaker, Sri M. Balasubramanian, Chairman, Board of Governors, Triple IT, Sri City. He highlighted on how AI plays a crucial role in business. Um, on the first day, Dr. Shanti Merlin introduced Sri Bhatrinath Gidambi, COE, Flanetics Solutions Private Limited, Chennai. Mm, he culminated how several functional supply chain applications based on AI have emerged in business. The second keynote address was delivered by uh, uh, Sri Danish Kumar, senior and architect, generated uh, AI Accenture, uh, which was inter introduced by Dr. Sheba, assistant professor, Bishop College, Trichy. He pointed out the applicability of healthcare in industry and manufacturing. <clears throat> then the technical session started by 2 p.m., which featured papers on AI and its various applications. The chairperson of these technical sessions were Dr. Karthikeyan, uh, Professor of Computer Science, Dr. James Managran, Head, Department of Computer Application, um, Dr. Ramraj, Assistant Professor of Management Study, Dr. Manigandan, um, Assistant Professor of Management Studies, Bishop College, Trichy. Dr. Muller, Assistant Professor of Holy, Holy Cross College, Dr. P. Kavita, Assistant Professor of Kaveri College, Mrs. Kavita Bakiam, Company Secretaryship, Mr. Anand ISDC, Dr. Nadraj, Assistant Professor, National College, and Mr. Aguila Shri, Assistant Professor of uh, Kaveri College. Today's session was started with a prayer provoking God's blessings by Dr. Um, Professor Ruth Felicia. Dr. Batmavadi introduced a keynote speaker, Mr. Lokesh. Um, Payasi, trainer for AI and ML, ISDC, Bengaluru. He participated, the, he pinpointed the importance of Python and edu in educational in Dr. Vijay Lakshmi introduced a keynote address speaker, 
Dr. Joseph Sagaya Anand, Faculty of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering Technology, UTEM, Malayka, Malaysia. Um, he, uh, Dr. Joseph highlighted the automation and AI that, uh, that can be motivated and, uh, in re and to reduce uh, human intervention and its, and its pivotal role in manufacturing and financial sector. Finally, the panel discussion um, with the experts were made. Dr. Raja Jabu Singh, moderator, principal, the St. Joseph College, and Dr. Saravanan, professor of finance and accounting, IAM, uh, Sri Jairam, deputy GM, market development, business standard, Sri Pradip Kumar, uh, assistant professor, Chinmaya Vidya, Vishwa Vidhi, Peet, Ernakulam, uh, Dr. B. Hanna, the proud alumnus, BHC, technical consent of CloudSense, Chennai. This was a vibrant session which helped the student participant to learn from the professional experiences. On the whole, the, on the whole, 265 papers were presented, out of which 13, 13 papers have been selected as best paper award in order to inspire and encourage the new budding uh, researchers and scholars. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. When you live for a strong purpose, then hard work is no longer an option, it's a necessity. These are the people who made hard work a necessity in their life and have succeeded today. To read out the winner's list, I call upon Dr. H. Kavita onto the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. We are happy and proud to inform you all that the total number of papers received for our two-day international conference on artificial intelligence, adoption and application in business hybrid mode. Totally, 30 colleges in and around the state participated and presented papers. Totally, 268 papers was presented. Now, I request one, par I request one participant from each college to come and receive your certificates. Sri Ramakrishna College of Arts and Science, Trichy. Jamal Mohammed College, Trichy, Sri Madhi Indra Gandhi College of Trichy, Kaveri College for Women, Trichy, <laughs> Hindustan Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Trichy. Kaveri College for Women, Truchi. <laughs> Hindustan Institute of Technology, Coimbatore. SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Truchi. <laughs> SNR Ramakrishna Arts and Science College, Coimbatore. Bharatidasan University, Trichy. <laughs> Wales Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies, Chennai. <laughs> Wales Institute of Science. Saranathan College of Engineering, Trichy. <laughs> Vidya Vataga First Grade College, Mysuru. SKSS Arts and Science College, <laughs> Bardia University, Coimbatore. St. Peter's Institute of Higher Education of Research, Avadi. <laughs> Alpha Arts and Science College, Porur. Urmo Dhanlakshmi College, Suchi. <laughs> Sri 
Sri Shankar Lal Sundarbhai, Jain College for Women, Chennai. National College, Trichy. National College, Trichy. Holy Cross College, Trichy. Government Arts College, Trichy. United Training Services, India. Patrician College of Arts and Science, Chennai. I am in College, Trichy. Department of Management Studies, Bishop Yuba College. Department of English, Bishop Yuba College. St. Joseph's College. St. Joseph's College. I'm in college, Trichy. St. Joseph's College, Trichy. Sri Ramakrishna College, Arts and Science, Coimbatore. Department of English, Bishop Eber College. We are happy to announce that out of 268 papers received, 13 papers were selected as best papers for the best paper awards. Dina Joshua, Darshni and Chitra from Holy Cross College. Rajashri from Holy Cross College, Trichy. Tanuja VS, SKSS Arts College. Professor K. Chitra and Divya Raj from Bharti Dasan University. Best Paper Awards from our college. Dr. John Robinson from Department of Maths, Bishop Weber College. Dr. John Robinson from Department of Max, Bishop Weber College. Yes, Nega from Second MCOM, Bishop Weber College. Logeshwaran B, Third BCOM E, Bishop Weber College.
Logeshwaran from 3rd BCOM E section, Bishop Biba College. Siva Ratna Vail and Joel Santosh from 1st BCOM International Accounting. Siva Guru Abhinaya Raj Lakshmi Angelin Yana Marial from 3rd BCOM Business Analytics. John Peter from 3rd BCOM Business Analytics. Siva Guru Abhinaya Raj Lakshmi Angelin Yana Marial from 3rd BCOM Business Analytics. John Peter from 3rd BCOM Business Analytics. Jason from 3rd BCOM BPM and Dr. Mutalakshmi Ma'am. Mohana R from 2nd sec MSc Max Bishop Iba College. Jason and Dr. Mutalakshmi Ma'am. Mohana R from Mohana R from 2nd MSc Max, Bishop Viva College. Michael Johnson, Yes Laksha, Vaishnavi from 1st BCOM B section. Michael Johnson, Laksha and Vaishnavi. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dignitaries. A verse in the Bible goes like this. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. We as Department of Commerce wanted to aid our carrying hands towards Mr. Kanda Pirmal of 2nd BCOM CA, who's about to undergo a heart surgery. I kindly request Dr. Josephine and HOD to hand over the check worth 2 lakh rupees to Mr. Kanda Perumal. In absence of Mr. Kanda Perumal, his sister is amidst us, so she will be receiving the check. Uh, Mr. Kanda Perumal of 2nd BCOM CA was diagnosed with a heart problem. As per his medical reports, he requires double valve replacement surgery. Yesterday, he underwent an operation and it went on well successfully. And today, he is under observation. So, kindly pray for his speedy recovery. And uh, the 2nd BCOM CA students, every year, the 2nd BCOM CA, our uh, CA, second year students involved in the social projects and this time the CA students decided to help Kanda Permal financially and we got the permission from a HOD and principal ma'am to raise funds through uh, in, from the college campus and our staff and students generously contributed an amount of rupees 2 lakhs together and uh, the, today we are going to hand over the check so I like to ask our HOD sir and the guest to hand over the check to the sisters of Kanda Perumal. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. 
It is customary for our department to honor the organizing secretary of international conference. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agent of human change. Dr. Jean Yandraj is one such kind person who loves upgradation and who never ceases to bring to pass all his imaginations into reality. One such event is this conference. With deep interest in organizational behavior, Sir knows exceptionally well to handle his crew in the most effective manner. His simplicity, decision-making, creativity, and imagination has benefited all of us and truly an inspiration for us. He is the man behind the ongoing success of the department, a man of radical change, most of all, a humane person. It is our honor to work with you, sir. I kindly request our chief guest, Dr. Josephine Ma'am, to present sir with a small token of love on behalf of our department. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I request Dr. Jean Yandraj, Head Department of Commerce, to express his gratitude and appreciation towards all who participated in the conference. Usually, the organizing secretary should have a list, but uh, thankfully, I don't have a list. So it will be very short. I know we are running behind schedule. Uh, respected President of the Valediction of the Two-Day Conference, Dr. Josephine, the Vice Principal of Holy Cross College, uh, Dr. Uh, Raja Jabba Singh, the Vice Principal of St. Joseph's College of Commerce, Bangalore, was a moderator for the panel discussion, uh, Dr. Samuel Devadas, the coordinator for CHIP to 2, other members of the faculty, uh, other uh, guest speakers, especially uh, Dr. Pradeep, Dr. John Robinson, Hannah, and very importantly, Dr. Jitten, Professor Jitten, the first professor of uh, the Department of Commerce, uh, members of the faculty, uh, delegates, and my dear friends, as the organizing secretary and as the head of the Department of Commerce, I'd like to thank you all for your contribution to the success of this uh, conference. I really have a long list of people to thank, but as you, as I told already, time is running short. So I'd like to thank a few people, especially I'd like to thank uh, the president of this valediction, uh, Dr. Josephine. Uh, I think we had nice uh, people presiding about both inauguration and valediction. The only thing, as far as I'm concerned, both should have uh, exchanged their positions. Madam gave a uh, brief history about uh, AI, which should have been done at the beginning. And uh, Victor, sir, who was the president at the inauguration, had certain apprehensions about uh, AI, which should have come at the end. But either way, we are very glad that uh, Madam was able to trace the origin and history of artificial intelligence and uh, uh, bring us to the current era. Even I thought it was only coined in 1955 by Professor John McCarthy, a mathematics professor from Dartmouth. But it was news, madam, that it was much earlier, centuries earlier, we were all thinking about AA. Thank you very much for those lovely information, which our students otherwise would have, no, would have missed. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your presence and for that very useful insight. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the other people who are, who are involved in uh, the conference, especially our principal ma'am. Uh, I should thank her in absence. She has to leave first. That is an urgent meeting that uh, requires our presence. Uh, Madam was very kind enough to sanction some funds for the conduct of, conduct of the conference and which has enabled us to complete it well. Uh, so I should thank our principal ma'am for all the support that she has been rendering. We had a small core committee. I am the organizing secretary, but I was a little worried 
that I'll not be able to do my job well. So there was a small core committee consisting of the previous organizing secretaries, starting with Hannah, ma'am, uh, Anushya, RV, ma'am, Seema, ma'am, H. Kavita, and, and the Shanti Malin, right. Those people were there and they handpicked a few of our younger faculty to assist them. All of them did great jobs, so we'd like to thank all of them. And uh, all the members of the faculty were part of uh, some uh, activity. They were part of a team that was in charge of something. So to every one of you, thank you so very much, especially Joshua who took care of designing the backdrop and taking care of this uh, all arrangements and for taking care of this online business. Thank you, Joshua. And to uh, many other people who have helped, MC Desk was wonderful with Mercy and uh, Devika ma'am. So thank you very much. And to all our delegates, we should be very thankful to you because a conference success is generally measured by the number of delegates uh, that attend. We have a large number of students with us, but uh, delegates from outside count a lot. So thank you very much for your confidence in coming to Bishop College. I hope your confidence was met by the proceedings of this two days conference. Uh, I should also like to thank our student volunteers, office bearers of various associations and student volunteers have made this possible. I should also thank Charles, who is always a member of a department for taking care of this mic and the other PA system. So to each one of you, Thank you very, very much. I, I know I'm, I have missed many names, but it's okay. We are very thankful to you. And as, uh, as they say, all is well that ends well. So I hope everything ends well. And I'd like to thank you all for your cooperation in completing this uh, conference well. So once again, thanks to each and every one of you. And may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dear participants, we have come to an end of the two-day conference. Please rise for the national anthem. <laughs> Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Uttara, Vanga, Vindya, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchala, Jagadhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashish, Mange, Gahe, Tava, Jaya, Gatha, जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे